it's a little bit disorganized still, but I'm almost ready to go. Um, almost ready to go. Oh, um, almost ready to go. Oh, gotta mute that. Um, I really am still kind of struggling with these freaking two nine twenties that don't want to cooperate with uh, OBS. Once I get them properly set up, it's fine, but. It seems like every time that I stream, something a little slightly different happens. So, Megabuds, hello. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to uh, quickly send out a tweet. I should. I wonder how many Twitter followers I've actually gained since I started tweeting more often for this. Before now, usually the only thing that I ever tweeted was just, like, stuff shared from other, you know, like, Instagram posts or YouTube videos, stuff like that. Purpleosity. Hello. Um, well, let's see. If you can't see me, can you hear me? Um, otherwise, let me uh, type you out a quick, quick message. Oh, that's okay, Megabuds. I know a lot of people don't and i'm i don't have very many followers but it seems to be the, the the thing to do okay can't uh, talk and type at the same time or i might either talk or uh type something unintended so let me finish this tweet Uh, tweet, get that taken care of, and, uh, okay, I have my title updated, I have, oh, let me just update one more thing, um, and then we can get started with some testing, um, just update this very quickly. I always feel like it's kind of better to uh, get started than to do the stuff off stream and then people that expect me to be live at 2 o'clock are sitting around waiting. So you can at least watch me fumble around anybody that's currently watching from Twitch or hello to anybody that's on YouTube watching in the future. Uh, okay that's done I think we're good here alrighty let me where's there's so many things you know before I started streaming I mean I knew that there were complexities to it but I don't think I really understood how many different factors there are so we're gonna be doing a couple oh good purple purpleosity I might just start calling you purple because uh, for some reason my tongue doesn't quite want to cooperate with the rest of that. We're going to be doing some water marble testing first, so I'm going to fold up a couple of test strips because I didn't get those done beforehand. And uh, like I have mentioned before, I just use like receipts, usually from the library. You can use whatever kind of scrap of paper you have handy or even like a fake nail. Um, I suppose you could even do testing on your own nails, but that would be a little bit messy. And then you wouldn't have your tests to keep to uh, reference later. Um, I really, I was kind of struggling to decide what to do this week. Um, last week was, I mean, a good testing stream because things really did not go according to plan. But... I wasn't super happy with the finished manicure when I initially did it. It did grow on me after a day or so, but I kind of want to revisit that idea. Yeah, Megabuts, this is wearing really well. I had one small chip on the corner of this nail. You probably can't even tell. I just stuck it right back on with, uh, with some base coat. Um... But since I wasn't completely happy with the crisscross that I did with the ILNP colors, I thought that I might revisit that with a slightly different pattern with some other colors. 
I also had some water marble ideas I wanted to try. And since it's Pride Month, I thought let's just do a whole bunch of testing with different rainbow stuff. Hello, Starlore. Oh, was E3 starting? I, for some reason, I thought that it didn't start until next week. But uh, I'm I'm hoping for some really cool announcements at E3. Although I don't usually uh, watch the broadcasts or the streams. Are you watching? Are you watching here on Twitch or are you watching somewhere else? Painted dinosaur. Hello. I know I saw an article pop up in my uh, my little news feed this morning that maybe the the remaster or the remake of Final Fantasy VII will actually get a re a release date. I I would love that. I that might actually like prompt me to buy a modern console. I've been thinking about buying one, but I don't know. There's so much that's available on PC now that I don't know if I really could uh, justify it. Yeah, you're watching on Twitch. <clears throat> you know, Twitch really, I mean, people think of it as far as like video game streaming, but there's so many other things that get streamed on Twitch. I know when there was the solar eclipse, even NASA has a Twitch channel and they had like all this solar eclipse coverage for just like hours and hours. So, okay, we've got a few strips folded here. We have our cup here, which I did not fill with water, so give me just a second. I did at least remember to get some water, so I'm going to just pour in here. And I usually try to use a similar amount of water each time I marble because, you know, the cup is tapered if you have the surface of the water up at the very top of the cup versus at the bottom of the cup, you actually have a different amount of surface area. So it's one more thing to kind of keep in mind when you're testing. And, um, Boyo, thank you for joining us. How are you? Um, let me see here. Okay. I have a whole box of polishes. I did at least get the polishes ready and I think the first ones I'm going to try are these finger paints ones. I don't remember if I've tried to marble with these before. They're, uh, they're kind of shimmery, so I'm thinking they might not work very well. And things are probably going to jiggle all over the place because I'm shaking these bottles. Get them mixed up a little bit. You can probably see here on the blue one a little bit that it's a little bit separated. And, uh... Hello, Nikki. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, these finger paints are some of my favorites. I I wish... I, I think eventually these might be some that I use up unless I can find something similar. Um, I kind of wish I'd bought backup bottles. But so often when I buy a backup bottle, it's like, God, why did I even do that? I'm not ever going to need that. <clears throat> you know, I'm doing pretty good. It's... It's a little bit of a weird day. It's very cloudy. It's kind of rainy and there's a lot of thunder. So I'm hoping we don't get any severe weather. Like, I mean, as far as like high winds or anything that might possibly knock out my power or my internet while I'm in the middle of the stream. But uh, we don't lose power very often here. So actually, let's maybe zoom out just a notch or two. There, that's better, I think. <clears throat> yeah, you finally get to see the water go on the cup. At some point, I really, I feel like I should do a complete basics of water marbling. I mean, I know I explain it for the most part um, every time I marble, but as far as like, some people don't even know what a Brita pitcher is. So to show you guys the Brita pitcher or really just break it down at the, at the simplest possible level. So... These were a collection, um, I want to say maybe 2016, that they had at Sally's. I forget the exact name of the collection, but they've got this really beautiful kind of like glass fleck finish to them. 
and I've used them in several manicures and I usually end up using them all together. So we'll see. Um, let's see where do I want to put this? Maybe like right here. I'm going to, oh man, these are stuck. Oh shit. There we go. It's another reason to keep your nail polish bottles clean, not just aesthetically, but so that you can actually get them open again. Um, so I usually use them together because they are all, um, you know, like a rainbow and I've done like a chunky waterfall with them. I know I used these in my, uh, rainbow feather manicure and let's see here. I like showing the bottles on camera when I'm testing. So it's always kind of a challenge to get them like lined up so that they're properly in frame and light cardio. Yeah. There's my workout for the day. Um, all this work may be for nothing if these don't spread out in the water. I think, um, actually after the fact, when I was having all those troubles with the ILNP polishes last week, I think part of it is because their hollow was so dispersed and almost like a fine glitter. And I didn't realize how much like a fine glitter they were until I was taking off that manicure that I used a normal base coat for. It was like most hollows remove just like any other regular polish, like any shimmer or cream. Those were closer to removing a glitter. I didn't have to like really soak my nails with pure acetone, but I did have to do like a couple cotton balls worth of polish remover. So the glitterier a polish is, the harder it can be to water marble with. Karitha EOP. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Happy to be finally part of a stream. I'm glad that you finally caught one. I know, you know, I know this time doesn't work for everyone and I'm not sure if as I add more days, if I'll, if I'll keep like scheduled times for each day or if there will just be other days where I aim to stream at some point during the day and get a couple different times going so that people in different time zones or people with different schedules can, can hopefully participate. <laughs> 20% off sales. Jerry with the host. I, that just, that tickles me every time I hear that little, that little hosting music. Hi, Jerry. Uh, Jerry is my late night, pretty much daily stream. That, that sounds kind of weird. Late night daily, but, uh, he, he's a big part of why I streamed. He, he encouraged me a lot. You guys can, thank him. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ninja. Everybody's here. Oh, I, it, it makes me just, well, you guys see cheese all over the place. Oh, it's a little gnat in here. Okay. So for those of you who are just joining us, we're playing with lots of rainbow things. June is pride month and I like lots of colorful things and rainbows all the time. But why not kind of, you know, get in on the, uh, I don't want to call it a theme exactly, but, you know, Pride Month is an excellent time to just get out with even more rainbows than usual. <laughs> yeah, and if if you like video games, Jerry is a speedrunner and a casual gamer. Been awake since yesterday afternoon. Oh, you didn't get to sleep after stream. Well, you got to go sleep now so that we can hopefully have a stream this evening. But uh, thank you for stopping by and thank you for the host. Ho I hope you sleep well. I know, you know, you and I both can have some sleep issues. So I hope you can get to sleep well and uh, rest up. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a little bit of another drink here. I swear sometimes I feel like I talk more during this couple hour stream than I literally do the entire like rest of the week. Uh, we've also got, I'll scoot it over here so you can see our little dish and we're going to pour out a little bit of polish remover, pure acetone for cleaning our orange sticks. Uh, 
Oh, you had to go buy a car this morning. So you only haven't been up. You've been dealing with a bunch of BS. Well, I'm I'm glad you at least did it. I know you had been talking about how you guys were looking for one. And, uh, you know, if you, if there's no stream tonight, I completely understand because buying a car, I, I don't know why that has to be such a freaking, is that clear enough? Like when I bought my car, like you said, you're there all day and it's like, I don't know, there should be a better way. Of course, isn't that what that one, uh, what is it that it, that's around here? Uh, CarMax, I think. They're like, oh, we're a, we're a better car dealership. Things are so easy here. And in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, right. Mm. The stash mobile. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give us a picture of the car, Jerry. We gotta get a car command if you're still here. Mm. Who, which, which rideshare service is that that used to have the, uh, the big pink mustaches on their car <laughs> go find one of those and stick it on jerry's car um okay water marbling we've got our colors here they're finger paints they're rainbow they're shiny and glittery yeah carvana i've heard of that one too lift lift with the pink mustaches oh you need to get one soon painted dinosaur yeah i've had Every time I've bought a car, it's because I unfortunately totaled my previous car. So then that's also an added layer of stress because it's not even like you can really take your time. It's like you need a car right now. But uh, yeah, I'll check out the Discord after I get done streaming and uh, take a look at the new stash mobile. So I'm going to start. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm I'm skeptical of whether these will work as I think I mentioned, because they are so shimmery. But we'll give them a try and see how they end up. And actually, they're spreading really nice. I, I like the way they're spreading out. They do look a little bit sheer. And I'm wondering if I should have prepped one of these strips with like a black base coat. Oh, now see... Now we're only six drops in and we're already not getting much spread. And I feel like I want to push it a little farther. I'm going to add a few more drops. Even though they're just sitting there. And when they just kind of sit there in the middle and they don't really spread out much, that's when you can end up with a messier design. Because it's like they're stacking up on each other instead of expanding out with each other. But one thing that can help that is the... up. Oh, they're drying already. That might be why these have not been used for a marble. Not sure if you guys saw that, but when I pulled to the edge here, this first ring of pink is already pretty much dry. But we were able to get the up and down in there. Whoa, whoa. Sorry about that. I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned last time, I have my... I feel like this is like the third or fourth camera setup I've tried. I have a snaky arm, and the camera is below the ring light and that's why I just kind of ran into it. I forgot quite how low it was to help with getting a closer camera view. Looks like a planet cut in half. Can I? Yeah, that pink is really quite dry, but I could probably start part way in and get another line or two. Can you guys see this wrinkling as I get closer to the edge here? If I were to pull out, that would probably stick to my orange stick. If you can take it all the way to the side of the cup, you can kind of anchor it and get your stick at least out safely. But I would say these are not not ideal for water marbling. Kind of a, a make it work scenario. So let's see how these look here. Oh, that's very pretty though. Where can we? Maybe like right here. Maybe just right on top of the cup here. With a black base. That might also look really cool, but I don't think because of the way that they were drying really quick, you would not have time to draw in very much of a pattern. Um, blue is a fickle marbler. Yeah, I don't know if it was, you know, in fact, maybe, okay, let's, uh, let's get a layer of black on this other side here. And I'm a little bit out of frame, but 
can't always, it's like I want to fit everything on frame because I'm trying to show you guys like literally the process, but there's only so much, so much frame to fit stuff on. So we'll get down a little bit of black here and then I'm going to try reversing the order because it's surprising how often just reversing the order can really get you quite a different look uh, to the finished design. It's like, Maybe one polish pushes a certain polish, but isn't pushed by other polishes, if that makes sense. Maybe not. It it makes a difference. You, you, you may see, or you may not. Um. Purpleosity, thank you for the follow. And Jackie, did I, I read your comment, but if I didn't say hello, hello. It gets, it's like, I don't, I don't know... If I start getting more people chatting, how in the world I'm going to keep track of who I've said hello to? Because I'm such a, like, I'm such a spaz. The old Greg video. I still have it up in a tab, and I, I will confess I have not watched it yet. I got, uh, I got super distracted by something. And, uh, but I do, I do still have it up, and I am going to watch it. So, if you guys want to make a bunch of inside old Greg jokes that I won't understand go for it, but I will understand them eventually. Mm. Yeah, silver base would also probably work well. Um, I was going to say, I almost would have, I almost want to like squeeze some silver on there, but we'll see how this works out with the black first and see if we can get any better spread. And I'll try to work really fast since I know that they're, uh, <clears throat> since I know that they're quick dryers. Be back in a bit. All right, Jackie. Okay, so real quick bullseye. See how these go here. And I know a lot of people like just watching the polish spread in the cup. I'll confess, I do too. There's something about it that's just like really, really satisfying. And I feel like these are spreading slightly, slightly better in this order. Oh, that wasn't quite centered. It's okay, though. So this is like nine drops. And that's kind of pushing it. We'll do that same. See, and I did manage to go faster. Or the pink dries slower than the purple. Because the pink is... St or the purple at the edge is still wet unlike when that pink was at the edge so we'll just draw in a few few little lines there they don't have a super even spread though we'll see how these go over the black whoa i'm slightly surprised by that not completely surprised but slightly um i think it's due to how thin the polish is when you're when you're marbling with it I've used these over black, and you definitely can get them to, uh, like, full color payout. But that's, that's quite similar to, uh, what the, to what the ILNPs were doing, actually. As far as with, I think it's mainly the yellow and the green that are looking so dispersed there. The, uh, the pink, purple, and blue actually are showing pretty well. I need, uh-oh. Something to dry these on. Yeah, so... You can see the difference between the, the black base makes. I mean, the yellow and the green don't even really look yellow and green anymore. Can can this share your chair, Benny? Is that cool? <laughs> Good boy. Hi. He, uh... I wasn't sure he was going to hang out with me uh, for a little while. He was going to go downstairs, but the puppy was loose. And uh, he he and the puppy get along pretty well, but not 100% yet. Because the puppy is, you know, very enthusiastic and Beanie is not down for that. <clears throat> How many drops of polish do I normally try to do in each cup? It really can vary depending on the colors. 
I'd say that when I start testing, my target is usually around 10, give or take, and kind of see how the polishes react. Sometimes it's going to be less, maybe six or eight. I think the most that I've ever done is probably like maybe 15. But you can, like, like I was saying, how you can tell when the polish stops, you're adding drops and they're kind of just going on top of each other and not spreading out. That's usually the point where you want to stop or, uh, or use a technique that will, um, disperse a little bit more of what's in the center, like pulling from the center out to the sides, then the center drop has a little bit more room to spread out. Whereas if you have a bunch of dots that are just stacked right on top of each other and you try to draw in toward the middle, then you're just drawing even more nail polish in there and it can really kind of get messy. <clears throat> yeah, they are like dark rainbows or <clears throat> I always think of like an oil slick. Oh, Next comment is about an oil slick. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm really hoarse today. Oh, <clears throat> just not used to all this talking. Um, sometimes it does mega butts. It's like, like I was saying, some colors don't want to push other colors and some colors don't want to be pushed by other colors. So sometimes you can find an alternative that'll help them all be a little more in fact hey let's let's see how that actually i don't want let me get a, i don't want to get my uh my mat too wet here because eventually i'm going to be working on my notebook so i'm going to try and keep my my dribbles under control here okay so we've got Hold on, let me dig in this box over here a minute. Dang it. Oh well. In one of my many disorganized nail polish boxes, I know that I have another bottle of uh, Black Expressionism. The finger paint's black, and I thought it was in that box that was right there, and it's not. So, um, when, when you're marbling with a bottle that's like, I'd say half full or less, you're going to need to be a little bit more mindful, because like, you have to keep in mind how long the stem is and how long the brush is. Like with these, when I dip it in there, the brush is like fully submerged in the polish, whereas if you're half full or less... You're going to need to tip the bottle to really get a good amount of polish on the brush to have enough to drip off of the brush. So, like, if I if I have a free hand, I'll just sit and, like, hold it at a little bit of an angle and dip it in. Otherwise, you kind of got to get a little bit of a lean going and be careful not to tip your whole bottle over. Yes, Purplosity. Um, clear works sometimes. Clears are, well, for first, you don't want to use a quick dry top coat, obviously, because you don't want polish to dry when you're water marbling. But even regular top coats seem to dry pretty quickly in a water marble. So it's another case where you kind of have to be careful of what pattern you're doing. You don't want to do something where it's really requiring a lot, a lot of strokes. And what I've actually found is a lot of times... um a matte top coat for some reason in the water seems to spread better and actually dry a little slower than certain regular clear polishes. So in cases where I want to use a clear, like if I really wanted to do a marble with a glitter, but I know the glitter doesn't marble, go ahead and do a base color of the glitter and then do a marble with a color and a clear. And it just takes a little bit of playing. It's like wanting to use a black in a water marble and you may need to try a couple different blacks to find one that works with the other colors that you're using. Yeah, I've I've done it a few times. It's uh, I've had good luck with OPI's top coat, but a lot of the times uh, I'll use like China Glaze's matte magic because the matte, like the top coat seems uh like resistant to being pushed by most colors. So you end up with 
thick rings, or in certain cases, seem <laughs> like exactly the opposite. You end up with really thin rings, whereas matte magic seems to have a consistency that's more similar to more polishes, and you get more consistent kind of normal width rings. So I'm going to be holding the black, and we're going to do black and a color, black and a color, black and a color. Boy, this is quite empty. And if you really got a drop that's stubborn, you can kind of like just barely touch the surface with it. Oh, our surface is dirty. This isn't spreading out very well at all. Okay, time to clean the cup before we get started. I'm just going to spread this out like this with the orange stick. Let it dry. <clears throat> and then clean surface. And then this drop should spread out more. Um, what I was saying is if you get a drop and it just like won't quite drip off, you can just very gently like touch the surface. Generally, I would say don't touch the surface, but if it really just won't drip off your brush, God, like this one. Sometimes I'll just go back in the bottle and try to pick up a little bit more polish. There we go. And you can see that spreading out better. So pink, black, orange, black, and you can see the black doesn't really want to spread with the glitters, well the shimmers, but then when you add the next color that kind of pushes the black out. And they are, I can see, because because the black didn't spread and you put the yellow kind of just on top of it, you get a little bit of a blended edge there. That's okay though. Black. Green. And sometimes you can get a little bit more spread with a little tap. Boy. I'm, I'm gonna go for it and try to get the purple and the blue in here, but it may, it may not work out. Cause these are just, stubborn <laughs> I'm do I'm going for it I'm going for the purple you guys can see exactly what I've been talking about though it's like these are not spreading out and instead of getting rings you're just getting like a stack on top of each other like if you it would be interesting like that would be cool to get like a clear cup and put a camera on the bottom of the cup to see what this looks like on the bottom because I would bet you probably might not even be able to see those last four four drops. They might literally be sitting on the surface of the previous polish. Um, whoa, and the pink again is dry. But I, I like the look of it. But this is like living on the edge. Like, okay, I can't draw from there. Even the orange, can you see it's sticky? So let's try starting at this ring right here. Even that's a little bit sticky. Kind of. Kind of pushing it with this one. Oh, and this is also what happens when you use too many drops. The purple and the blue are both like really not the purple you can see the purple the blue is nearly invisible it looks like on camera but that's because they they didn't spread out properly and i really probably should have stopped with the green ring so it would be a cool look if they would cooperate but i don't think they're going to cooperate uh jen sweden hello thank you for joining us purple i i love purple you guys know well most of you probably know purple is my favorite color a water marble mountain oh my god i can only imagine how long that would take be sitting here for all day maybe that would be a good uh you know people do those uh follower or subscriber specials <coughs> <clears throat> I don't know how many followers or subscribers I'd need to convince me to do a water marble mountain. Polish mountain would be a good uh, incentive also, you know. I, I always kind of intended to do it, and then I'm a procrastinator, as you guys know. 
never got around to it and at this point it's like man that's kind of old but it's still cool i mean i know it's like a, a controversial topic as far as nail polish can be controversial but uh it, it's all in fun i don't know why some people got such weird attitudes about it those outside rings though yeah that's that was pleasing other than the fact that they were dry and i couldn't i couldn't draw through them <clears throat> yes, Karitha, I do sometimes give it a little shake or even a little, like a little tap with the orange stick. Well, that's pretty dirty now. Um, but with these, I think they're just, they're just a little too stubborn. And I think, I think I'm going to just go ahead and move on to one of my other, my other selections. These may work though for one of the other ideas that I had. So I'm not going to put them back into the... Oh, I did it again. I'm sorry. I'm not going to put them back into the box. I'm just going to stack them up here at the top of my mat and try not to hit the camera again. Mm. Um, you mean with the black in between Megabots? Um... <clears throat> Maybe. I'm trying to think. I thought I still had. Oh, they are right here. Oh no, this isn't all of them. This is only. I thought I still had the uh, the water marble tests of those close to hand. I could only find the uh, the veil tests. <clears throat> Yeah, like a subathon. Well, some t it it depends. I I feel like all those are kind of terms that people use uh in different ways. Like sometimes I've seen people call it a subathon if they're trying to meet a certain sub goal, so they're streaming like extra days or certain incentive things to reach a certain number. I'm more thinking of, you know, like when when you do reach a certain number just naturally then you do a little uh, kind of reward stream for your followers or your subs. So, what do we want to give a try next here? I think next we're going to play with the color paints. And I've marbled with the color paints before, but it was not a traditional marble. Um, the miracle mat that I'm working on actually... You know, I've got a couple comments from people that, you know, oh, your mat's upside down. It's facing towards me for a couple reasons, but the main reason <clears throat> that it's not uh, placed so that you guys can read it is that at the top edge, in fact, can I? Yeah. Um, up here, these little rings are raised and... I actually did what is referred to as a miracle marble where you uh you fill those little rings up with water and marble right on the mat and then let them dry and turn into decals and uh I used the color paints for that so I know that these do marble and um you know I didn't really go over the finger paints the names of the colors and I don't think I'm gonna go back and do it now because I don't know if most of these are still available anyway it, it will be included when I put this on YouTube I try to include a list of every polish that's used like in the information box so if you're curious about the the names I'm just going to uh, refer you to that video which will be up in two days <laughs> so you have to be a little bit patient or you can go look them up and the same with the color paints because there's like eight of them um you could look up the color paints collection if you really want to know the colors right now but i'm gonna get them open and get to uh, get to marbling we've got a pink oh no wait we've got a red and a pink and orange and a yellow then we've got the green whoa oh okay that just happened literally while i was uh <laughs> opening this bottle of polish 
I lost a Peely. <laughs> so, um, the other day, we were talking about, well, how many days of wear do you usually get out of a peel-off base coat? It varies. The, uh, the crisscross manicure wore really well for five days. This manicure was done Thursday, so we're on the third day. And, uh, honestly, that was not, like... Uh, much exertion. I literally somehow caught it on the edge of the bottle and ended up less less one nail's worth of polish. <laughs> That's, uh... Yeah, it, it happens. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Got an ice cube in that drink. Um... <clears throat> I would be more mad, except I had already planned to peel it off at the end of stream. So, uh, there's one early one. Yeah, I could definitely stick it right back on. I mean, let's move this out the way a little bit. When it comes off this neatly, I mean, it really is still, you know, if you get a piece of, get some base coat, just stick it right back on there. But... I, I was planning on taking it off, so I'm not going to mess around with all that. That's a really good idea, Painted Dinosaur. A really good, uh... It, it, it's a it's a life hack. <laughs> or, uh, as we say around my house, a ghetto solution. Yeah, five days is pretty rare for me, Purpleosity. And, um, when I peeled it off on stream on Thursday, it was actually still very stubborn, and, um, uh, it didn't want to come off, even on the fifth day. And I'm not sure exactly why. Peel-off base coat is weird. And, uh, sometimes I think certain brands it interacts with different than others. But, uh, um, yeah, this, this one... I, I kind of expected it also because I will confess I was like uh, literally right after I did it getting really deeply into some ribs which were pretty messy and uh, I'm just glad it didn't come up with any like barbecue sauce right under there because sometimes it feels like uh, greasy foods or stuff like that can be as bad for a peel off base coat as like uh, going swimming if you're sitting around eating something you know finger food that's greasy it may uh you may lose a nail be careful um <clears throat> yeah i mean to the one thing is uh mega butts like if you use peel off base coat to stick it back on whoa get in here like the you know the peel off base coat my one tip is don't apply the base coat and <clears throat> stick the peely back on right away. Give the base coat like 30 seconds to a minute to just get slightly tacky and then put the nail on. And then the one thing you have to kind of be careful of is to line it up with the tip of your nail so that it's not like back too far or it's not hanging over. Um, another thing that sometimes I do and sometimes I don't is to add then another layer of top coat also and reseal it around around the tips <clears throat> ooh yeah Caritha that would be frustrating that sounds sort of like what I feel like happened with the uh, Madame Glam peel off base coat when I used it with regular polish it was so stubborn to come off, and when I used it with gel polish, I really liked it. When I used it with regular polish the first time, it felt stubborn, but it didn't feel like it damaged my nails. But the third time that I used it, I did notice a little bit of, like, distress. Like, it wasn't bad. It, I didn't feel like huge chunks had come out, but I just had a couple places where I was like, you know, that looks overly dry or, you know... Not like it looked before I was using that peel off. Um, <clears throat> okay, so make sure these are in appropriate order. Actually, maybe we'll do pink, then red, then orange, and then the pink will be, yeah. So, 
a lot of times if I'm using like two or three colors, I try to use equal amounts of both colors. When you're using like eight colors like this, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to use two drops of each color because that would be like 16 rings and that's pretty rare. So if you want a particular color to be in the middle or a particular color to be at the edge, you kind of have to keep that in mind beforehand. Of course, I don't know yet how many rings these are going to realistically create. So I'm just going to start with the pink and we'll see how far we go. <clears throat> Try to go quickly, of course, as usual. And actually, I've got my fan going over here also. If I were really, like, doing a manicure, I probably would try to turn my fan off or turn it so that it at least wasn't creating any draft in my work area because just, like, blowing in the cup can speed up the drawing process. Any kind of fan or any kind of vent, anything that's creating a draft on your cup can impact how how quickly the polish is drying and I, I don't worry about it a ton when testing but it's it is something to keep in mind and consider so let's go here and see and these are like jellies so they are on the sheer side and they show up pretty nice over white but if I was going to marble with them, I would probably consider the uh, the silver base that comes with the collection. The, uh, I think it's called Silver Canvas. These are spreading really nicely. I wonder if I will get two full, full drops of everything. We'll just see as I keep going here. And they're still spreading out nicely. Yeah, maybe I'll get a full 16 drops. Wow. That's a lot of drops. See, now the green was not really spreading too much, but we're still... I think we're still okay. I'm going to push it. Oh, we've got a blurb. Now, stuff like this that's happening right here, I don't know what's up with that. Sometimes your uh, bullseye will be fully nicely symmetrical. Sometimes you'll get some kind of weird crap going on like this. In this case, I think we'll just make our center line right above that and uh, pull in some petals from the sides. And sometimes, you know, when I'm drawing in toward the center, I do always recommend like some small dips at the center to make sure you don't end up with a blurb of polish. But that can also, in some cases, you know, pull out too much polish. And you can see, well, maybe you can see, hopefully you can see, there's a little tiny bald spot in the center of the polish. Sometimes you can get the other polishes to kind of pull in by another very careful dip. Sometimes you might need to actually be more careful when you're stroking in kind of stroke in to fill up the spot, and then a very, very careful dip to avoid any holes. Like the line between not having a goober of polish and not having a hole in your design. I could probably, I could probably draw some more in this, but I'm going to go ahead and, and dip, the, dip the test strip and see what we get here. Ooh! Now that's a rainbow water marble. I feel like the center is on the uh, messier, muddier side, you're not really getting um, a clear definition of like the, uh, really the blue and the purple. And even the teal, like, let's, uh, where's my, whoa. Let's zoom in here a little bit so I can point out what I'm really talking about here. So, if I can get the glare off of this so like when you look at this teal color next to the green here in the outer ring you can see it's a very bright teal compared to this intersection where it's kind of blending in more with the green and with the indigo and you don't get this same bright teal even though it's the same color so that's another sign that really I was pushing it with the number of drops. I mean, I was able to get 16 drops in there, 
but the colors are much more defined in the outer rings than they are in the inner rings. In fact, maybe I'll leave this this close so you guys can have a better a better view of the water marbling. It's actually just there. Whoa. <laughs> Messing with the camera, my nemesis. Uh, a smooshy with all the colors of the rainbow. I that's another thing I would like to try. In fact, you know. Okay, time time to start taking notes again of other stuff, other stuff that I want to try this stream so we don't forget. So, smooshy. After this. And the scales. Okay. Um, the finger paints might actually work well for that. I feel like the color paint, the color paints might blend together too much and end up with something that's more, more murky, like the center of this is. You know, that really isn't a very, uh, attractive water marble in my opinion. The center versus the outer rings like these. Like, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous water marble. Um, so I actually want to try those with slightly fewer drops. And, uh, I'm just setting it over here. Actually, if I turn it this way, then you guys can see it. Yeah? Yeah. And Beanie's so tolerant, he doesn't mind sharing his chair. <clears throat> Maybe that's what you should do tomorrow. Yeah. Marbling over a gradient. I have. I, uh, if you look on my channel, probably it would pop up if you, if you search water marble gradient. I know I also did, uh, one that was kind of in two parts. It was a green gradient that I did in one video and then a second video where I water marbled over the green gradient. And I think, I think that I used China Glaze's rainbow, which is a little bit of a opalescent sheer. And so it ended up actually not looking like a green gradient underneath. It gave it this really cool opalescent look to it. And I also did it over, it was either a, blue or purple or blue to purple gradient. I know I wore that on one of my vacations. So, and, and that's an example of a case where you would want to marble with a clear polish, obviously to be able to see the gradient underneath. So I think in both of those cases, I used a, uh, a black and a clear. In fact, let's see if we can, uh, wear, <laughs> Let's look. Do we have uh No, none of those. You know, I think it's too old to be in this folder. I started like a couple years ago, it was like, man, a lot of times I want to uh, just look at all the different thumbnails of my video without actually like going into YouTube to look at them. So I created a folder where I stick all my thumbnails that I use for my videos, but it only goes back a couple years. And I think that that one, of course, I could probably let's uh, let's do this. Uh, mm. Okay, give me just a minute here, and we'll uh, we'll have an example. Hi, Liz. Thank you for joining us. And Suhu, hello. Neon gradient water marble. That would be awesome. Okay, so let's um. I find Oh, I did do a neon gradient water marble. I had completely forgotten about that one. 
Oh, and I did a hollow gradient water marble. I'd completely forgotten about that one. Where's the one I was actually thinking of? This one. Okay, so... Let's, uh... Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna learn on stream here. We're going to add... Okay, hold on. Move over here, OBS, so I can see you. We're going to add... A browser. Okay. And... No, wait, not that one. No, no, no. Wrong thing. Yes. Let's, uh... Do I just want to do a window if it's a... It must be. Window, since it's a window that I have open right now. So let's... This one. Yes. Okay. So, if I do like this okay so here this one shows the cup with a, a black and china glaze rainbow it's sheer enough that you can see the gradient through it um you could also use a clear then we scroll down a little bit here's the neon gradient one and that one was one of my real favorites i can't believe that one like slipped my mind as i was thinking about this um a hollow gradient that i wasn't super thrilled with another hollow gradient that i wasn't super thrilled with and then down here somewhere where is it this is the one that i was thinking of um this is a green gradient with uh black and china glaze rainbow on top of it so long answer to a short question is that yes you can definitely marble over a gradient and it'll probably be awesome <clears throat> that's your favorite thank you hello caters thank you for joining us um okay so where were we? We were marbling with OPI color paints and we're going to try something with uh, slightly fewer rings. So I think, I think we're going to aim to have the pink in the middle and I think we're going to aim for about 12 rings. So let's, uh, let's start with yellow, I think. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, hold on just a minute. Got my got my layout all weird after getting that window capture just to show you guys that. Um, one one of these days I'll get better at all that all that type of streamer stuff, and I need a little bit of more polish remover in my in my little dish here. Because a clean orange stick, I mean, if there's well, I don't know if I could pick just one thing to be important for water marbling, but a clean orange stick is definitely up there in importance <clears throat> okay so let's do yellow orange red pink that pink is acting kind of weird i wonder if it needs to be shaken purple the purple too like they're not doing clean rings blue turquoise green <clears throat> and yellow orange red pink yeah that pink is weird so I'm gonna try that same sort of a uh, flower pattern Carefully going in toward the center from the edges. And I'm going to try and fit in a few more petals this time. You can see these draw really nice and clean. Although that center, I'm not sure if that's showing up on, on camera. I definitely think I should have shaken that pink a little bit more. I thought I had shook all these up before, that they didn't need it, but... I like that the lines are staying very clean for the most part. 
some some polishes you'll get very wonky lines even if you're drawing cleanly of course i just ruined any kind of symmetry with the flower with those couple strokes but i wanted to do like thinner petals on one half of the design and leave the thicker petals on the other half of the design let's uh ooh yeah, that pink is weird. Let me give this a shake. I like that, though. That's gorgeous. Of course, now, the other challenge when you are uh, marbling with this many colors is making sure that you actually get all those colors on your nail. If that's what you're going for. You could, you know, have your different arms, or different arms, different nails have different amounts of each color on it but like if I were going sideways this would be a little bit tricky definitely would need to get creative with how you dip your nail if you want all eight colors to fit on it but I think that is with the exception of that weird pink in the middle a much cleaner rainbow than our initial uh than our initial test. Made it to two in a row. Yay. Thank you, Sacrista, for joining us. You like that, Ninja? Yeah, that's pretty nice. So, I, I do like that, but I also, you know, let's test this now. One of the things that I've been wanting to try is a uh, a layered water marble and i thought that it would go well with uh or that it would work what work well rather god i keep hitting this camera i was not having this problem on thursday but on thursday i wasn't i wasn't doing very much moving around to polish i was just painting my nails i thought that it would be really cool to do a layered water marble with uh sheer colors and in the case of the color paints i thought that if i used the primary colors and then use the primary colors again to layer over it where they would cross i would get uh secondary colors obviously you know red and yellow make orange red and blue make purple so a pastel rainbow pastel rainbow is also a good idea i've actually done a pastel in fact, let's, uh, we'll go back here to our window. Let's, uh, bring this back up here for a minute. So we had this, this one that's up here is, uh, pastel stripes. Then the one underneath it, this Easter pastel and hollow that was really cool this pastel but where's the one that i'm actually there we go this easter spring pastel i believe is done yeah i can see the bottles on the side there all with revlon shades and that was a really nice pastel rainbow i loved the way that one turned out and uh oh actually here we have some other testing and i think that design that you can see this was with the uh, Color Club Pastel Neons, which sounds like an oxymoron, but really isn't. So, yes. Yes to Pastel Marbles. Uh. <laughs> what are you investigating, Ninja? The Pastel Marble? Um, okay, so we're going to use these three colors. We're going to do a marble, and then we're going to dip that same test strip into a second marble. So, I'm going to guess we'll go for 9 or maybe 12 rings. We'll see. I want some, not necessarily super wide rings, but some that you'll be able to tell when they're overlapping with each other. Um, and hopefully this turns out the way I kind of envision it don't have a super even spread going on here let's give it a little pull on this end there we go 
red, yellow, blue, and I think we can get away with three more drops. Red, yellow, blue. Now, as far as the design, I had all kinds of thoughts. I thought, well, you could do overlapping petals, but I think at least, especially for the testing, we're just going to get some chevrons in here. They're kind of stripey. You can make them more stripey depending on how you draw them in there. But this will be good to start with. We'll dip in. Ooh, that's very vibrant. Oh, dang it, the camera again. I all, I, I've been happy with this, aside from me continuing to knock into it. You know, I wonder if I should have used the teal instead of the blue, because the blue is coming through quite dark. We'll see when we do the, uh, the second marble. Um, I also ordered another little, I don't know if I want to call it a gadget, but uh, the connection that usually connects to my ring light is on a hot shoe. So I got kind of a hot shoe extender that should also allow me to drop the camera down a little bit without it being quite as in the way as it is right now. It was pretty cheap, so I thought I would give it a try, and uh, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> I'm going to do the exact same thing, same number of drops and everything, and then we're going to add a second layer of marble on top of this and see how it turns out. So just red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. And I'm I'm feeling kind of slightly more skeptical than I was because the blue turned out so dark, but it might surprise me. I hope it surprises me. All right, there we go. Get in and up and down and then draw in. I'm going to try. I should have paid more attention when I was drawing those first chevrons. I want to kind of keep them similar sized. Okay, so now I want these like at an angle like this. Yeah, I think. Okay, that's, that's, um, um, that's, um, it, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> um, the, the blue is definitely too dark. I mean, for a, for a sheer jelly polish, the blue is not showing up too sheer and jelly right there. <laughs> um, yeah, the, and it, and it's, it's so dark, it's almost hard to see, like, the, uh, how the red and yellow are really interacting in there. Um, yeah, that, that's the thing that we did. I'm I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to try it with just, in fact, actually, I'm going to try it with, instead of these three, let's move to just two, and instead of the red, I'm going to try the pink. And, God, okay, I'm sorry. I know I keep apologizing, and then I keep doing it again. Uh, I, I didn't expect to have this much trouble because it went so easy on Thursday, and it seemed like such a good solution, and now I'm like, a complete klutz with it. <laughs> yeah, it's a ha it's a ha it's a happy accident. I mean, it's it's an act. Well, it's not even an accident. It's exactly what I intended to do. It just looks a little different than I expected. So, okay, let's try. And let's try. What were we using there? Did we use nine or twelve? I think we used twelve. Let's go for either 8 or 10 with just the pink and the yellow. I'm, I think for this one I'm just going to do these two. 
I feel like the teal. I'm te I'm gonna do well. No, okay, just with two. See, you guys, you guys are literally witnessing it happen as I all of a sudden like want to try three different things at once. But I can only do one thing at once. Well, okay, that didn't make sense. One thing at a time. And uh, first, we're gonna go pink and yellow, pink and yellow, pink and yellow. Looked like lemonade. And, uh, I don't know, should I do the chevrons again, or should I try overlapping petals? I think I'm gonna try the chevrons again. I, even I didn't expect that to be quite so, uh... Dang it, I lost track of my, how many do it? One, two, three, four, okay. Damn it. Okay. Pay attention, Colette. Don't get distracted by trying to talk. Even if it's talking to yourself. Okay. Let's, uh, keep this even, too. So we'll do one, we'll do two, three, four, five. Okay. We'll dip this. That's very bright and happy. Oops, I didn't realize I was slightly out of frame there. Sorry, guys. That's, uh much brighter. I can see uh, a layer on top of that turning out much more like what I was thinking. So let's build the second bull guy. Yeah, the yellow, I mean, the yellow is dark, but it's still more of a jelly than the, it seems like the blue is. The, from the color paints, I would say the blue, well, actually, technically, I keep calling it blue. Technically, it's indigo. There's an indigo and a teal, but technically no blue. And also the purple can turn out very dark in some cases. Um, painted dinosaur, that is absolutely on my list. Um, I have my uh, Fruit by the Finger series, which is sadly, sadly neglected. And um, doing something citrus has always been on my, on my mind to do for the list. Or for the, for the playlist, for the series. Um, and just never have gotten around to it yet. I, uh, I even thought I could do, like, a, a series of, of citrus, like, I, I think I figured out a different citrus for each hand. I mean, obviously there's orange, there's lemon, there's lime, there's grapefruit, and, uh, that's four. I must have figured out some other fifth fifth citrus. Maybe blood orange or something like that. Um, and I think that the technique that I used like when I did the watermelon water marble would work well to have, you know, like a layer of white to act as the uh, pith and then you know, some other colors inside of that and the color as the rind and I don't know. I just never got, never got around to it. Okay. So make sure I'm dipping this the right way. So we're going to get a cross section of color and dip and it's hard. Okay. That is also still, it's a thing. <laughs> Mm, I, I do think with this one, at least you're getting a little bit more of the effect that I was going for in places where it crosses, like right here. It's maybe a little bit hard to see on camera. Let me see if I can dry this out a little bit. It's got a lot of water on it still. I maybe should have waited until the base color was, or the base marble was dry before adding the second marble. But I can see sections where the yellow and pink crossed where I'm definitely getting an orange. And I, I would say it's more successful than the previous one. That doesn't mean it's successful, but more successful. Maybe. Let's, uh, we'll do these two, the pink and the yellow. And we'll add in 
the teal. And, uh, we'll try a different... I'm gonna try the petals. Or maybe I should try one chevron and one petals. You like the chaos in that? You know, it doesn't... It doesn't look bad. Um, the thing that bugs me is that I don't know if I were to do that as a manicure, if it would be recognizable as a layered water marble. And then it's kind of like, well, is it really worth all that work? I mean, I enjoy water marbling. It's not just work. It is fun. But on the other hand, it, it is also partly work. <laughs> Excuse me. And to have a finished design where you can't really uh, appreciate the water marbliness of it is kind of frustrating. I feel like I could get that kind of... I mean, it it somehow almost gives me like a uh, a splatter effect feel. In fact, maybe... And also, if I use less drops, that might also help because it will keep the polishes a little bit sheerer. Sheerer? More sheer. I'm sure more sheer is probably more proper. Um, so let's... Let's do some petals. And we'll just go around like this. You can see this is a little bit different than when I usually go from side to side. That actually, usually they end up much more lopsided. I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. And I'm going to aim this for kind of closer to the side of the cup than the center of the cup, even though I'm getting still most of the cup. Yeah, that actually wasn't very far to the side at all. Um, and that's... I, I mean, I like even just that. If If you have this collection... You can pick whichever colors you want out of it to marble. I mean, they all marble well, and they all marble together, at least that I've found. It just comes down to, you know, what exact look are you going for? What pattern are you really going for? Wish I hadn't got that big bubble right in the middle. See, the thing with this was, I was thinking, like, I wanted to get more, like, half of the petals and then in the cross marble have the petals like overlapping maybe i should try this with a zigzag on top of it maybe that's what i'll do that could create a little bit more interest to the design than trying i think it would be difficult to get the the petals to react the way I wanted. It would actually, this is a case where it would actually be easier to get the uh, the combination of design that I want on my fingers than it is to get it on the test strip because with your fingers it's simple to face the petals in the opposite direction just depending on what direction you dip your nails and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a minute once I finish this test. All right, we're going to do this one as chevrons. We're going to make these a little tighter than the last couple, which may or may not be a good thing. We'll we'll see in a second here. Okay. All right. Cross your fingers. Hold your breath. Get ready to uh, point and laugh. Dang it. Um, <laughs> it's another thing. I, I do think, though, this one is more, more successful. Can I, let's, uh, let's even get a little bit closer here. Can you guys see how the overlapping places are creating the other colors? So we've got places where the yellow and the turquoise are overlapping and really creating a green. We've got places where the yellow and pink are overlapping and really creating an orange. I, I think the main challenge with this layered water marble is picking designs that can complement each other without overwhelming each other. 
I think that would be the thing to work on with that. Um, uh, double petals, good idea. Two drops per color for a wider base color. Yes. Um, wait, I missed a whole bunch of comments. I'm sorry, you guys. And eventually, I know eventually I'm going to get to a point where, like, I can't read all the comments because they're just coming in too quickly and I'm not going to have the opportunity to, like, scroll back up. But I feel like right now I don't have any excuse for not keeping up with all the comments. Did I give up on the finger paints? Not completely, but as far as testing anymore right now, yes. Um, Drop a clear between the colors into different color families. You know, ooh. That also might actually work really well painted dinosaur. It's kind of not what I was originally thinking. Like, my original idea was, like I said, just that it would be so cool to use the primary colors and in the overlapping spots then get secondary colors. But, uh, do I? Actually, I have. I do have a mat out here. Um, let's give that a try. Painted dinosaur. Um, and two drops per color for a wider base color might actually also work. Um, I think all these compliments were on the very last one, because I don't think, okay, yeah. Yes, the color combinations create the full rainbow, which was the plan. And I mean, really, like, if I bring in, let's see here, if I zoom back out a couple clicks... Whoa, maybe a couple more clicks. So, like, all right, all right. I know I suck at this in particular. I can almost fit these three on here. This one is giving me the closest to the effect that I wanted as far as creating, creating a rainbow without using rainbow colors. Um... They're all just kind of so, so much going on. You know, I wonder too, we, we may play with that a little bit more, but right now I want to play with that idea of using a clear in there and doing different, different layers. Um, I can see how this would be difficult or challenging as a full man. Yeah. KJD Radcliffe. Hello. Um, oh, the other thing I was saying is that it's easy to flip the direction of the petals on your nail. So, you know, you have a flower in the cup, the middle of the flower is in the center, and you have the petals all around. So if you dip two fingers in and you aim the center, the center of the flower in between the nails, you're going to get petals going this way on this nail, and this nail will have them going the opposite direction. If you then want to do a second layer and have the petals going in the other direction, instead of dipping these same two nails together, dip these two nails together. The center of the flower will now be here. So this finger will get petals going the opposite direction. Does that make sense? Um, but on the test strips, it's like you're getting most of the cup of water and it's kind of hard to just get half of the design and then the opposite half when you do the second dip. You know, that is really another example, though, of how um, my initial... Oh, I ran out of test strips. Time to fold a couple more. Okay, let's dry off our mat here. Um, I thought that it would be simple, and I thought that the the different designs would be easy to see. For some reason. I don't know where I got that idea even in my head. Um... I mean, it makes more sense that they would be hard to see because you're seeing both of them. It's almost like an optical illusion in a way. <clears throat> um, that's genius. Which, what's, I was genius? Which part? <laughs> the part about dipping the different two nails. Well, there's my naked nail again. I'd almost forgotten about that. Yeah, I, I do that a lot. Um using the different ways to dip your nails to determine how your design is going to apply on the nail. And a lot of times, um, like that's one of the benefits if you do decals with the water marble, or if you do like the 
uh, the Miracle Marble or uh, use the Stamp on a Marble. And in fact, speaking of the Miracle Marble, I, I was going to show you guys um, how that did finally turn out. Let's uh, bring the window capture back up here. So if we... This one. So you guys see this rainbowy one here? That's the one that I did in the little rings that are on my Miracle Mat. And you can see, like, it was pink on the inside and through purple to pink on the edges. Look how dark, whoops, how dark that purple and blue are at the edges. Like, it's not, can I make this a little, oops, now we're watching it. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I meant to come over here and see if I could make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, like that. Um, the purple and the indigo are very, very dark at the edges of this one. And that's one of the problems I was even running into with regular water marbles using these colors. But, actually, let's leave that up here. There was also, um... Uh, this purple flower water marble, this is using uh, the purple of the collection, and you can see it turned out actually purple, not quite so dark as it was showing in that other one. So just another example of how important testing is, because the same color can even turn out very differently in different water marbles under different circumstances. Hmm... can't do your nails together because they're diff different sizes. Yeah, it can be a challenge, but it also, like, sometimes you can kind of embrace that. Like, actually, a lot of times if I'm trying to do a quick marble and do as few as possible, I'll dip these three nails together, and then I'll actually dip my thumb and pinky together, which is kind of hard to show, but I kind of hold them together like this. It's probably still hard to see. Maybe if I move this like this next to each other and dip in and they're obviously the two nails with the with the greatest size difference and um <clears throat> the other thing with my thumb is depending on if i dip it by itself or if i dip it with some other nails i mean obviously if you're dipping your nails together they're all facing the same if i dip my my thumb and pinky like that they're facing different directions and the design on the thumb will be flipped and sometimes that's okay. Sometimes I even prefer that and will do it intentionally. Sometimes it just happens out of laziness and I'm okay with it. <clears throat> so like when somebody says, oh, it's impossible to lick your elbow and then everybody tries to lick their elbow. Okay, so let's try... We'll start with just... We'll start with the yellow. How about that? And actually, we might need to... Uh, this surface is looking very scummy. Oh, still spreading well, though. All right, yellow. And this is uh, Orly's mat, because it's what was out on my desk. And these are working pretty well together. But I think you can tell that it doesn't... Like I was talking about, it doesn't spread a lot. You may not be able to use quite as many drops as you think. So let's let's do one more yellow. And then um we wanna do chevrons, we wanna do petals. I guess I'm gonna do chevrons here. Whoa, and then this is this is actually not my favorite mat for marbling. It works, but uh, it's a little bit sticky. So here we have yellow and clear. Now we'll do a layer of pink and clear. And if you're thinking the water is starting to look slightly weird, you are absolutely right. I'm thinking it's probably from this teal given the shade. It might also be a little bit from the green and the uh, indigo, but certain polishes will definitely like tint your water as you go along. And uh, 
by the time you're done, sometimes your water will literally be like blue or green. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, do a pink and clear. <clears throat> Karitha, yes, it can be awkward. It can be awkward actually getting them in the cup, the thumb and pinky together like this. It can also be awkward actually cleaning up in the cup, pulling out of the cup. If they're stick stuck together with liquid latex, getting them unstuck without messing up your marble. It's, I, I would say it's maybe kind of an advanced hand position actually probably would be a little bit easier if you are not using liquid latex. Um, it, like I said, it's something I do when I'm kind of in a hurry. My more normal combination would be ring and, fin ring and pinky index and middle, and then the thumbs usually end up getting dipped by themselves. Uh, so let's get started with this pink and clear. And then we'll layer that on top of the yellow and decide if we want to also add a blue and clear or a, a turquoise and teal and clear layer. One more. Um, and I'm going to just do chevrons again. So... We've got this facing like this direction. Let's do like a partial turn. Then if we do the teal, we'll do another partial turn. That is uh It's kind of interesting. I feel like I'm getting not as much orange as I would expect. Maybe I would get more orange if I did the yellow on top of the pink instead of the pink on top of the yellow. Let's do let's do the teal also and see how that turns out. Uh, flavored peppermint sticks. Like a candy cane or just like actual stick? There's all kinds of like the old schooly hard striped candy that are really pretty. That could be a, a inspiration for nail polish right there. Just go in grandma's candy dish and find what kind of weird old school candy they have. All right, let's get one more. And this is spreading out even kind of a little bit differently than the others. This just shows that every polish is a little bit different in the water. And I'm going to do this as a chevron also ooh that was messy that outside ring is drier than the others were okay so we started out like this we did a partial turn let's do another partial turn huh huh oh this is so wet and floppy right now but uh i think that's actually one of our more successful layered looks i mean it's still it's it's a little bit weird still it's a little bit overly busy i would say still but um i don't hate it if nothing else it's a learning experience um i feel like i should do one more water marble because i have one more edge here let's uh Let's bring the other colors back over here. So, oops, dang it, sorry. Again. And we did that one using just 12 drops with pink in the center. Let's do another with 12 drops with uh, the purple in the center. Let's just pull out of that. Um... <clears throat> Oh, you guys like that one. Straight stick, six inches long and all different color flavors. Also, they weren't just all like different kinds of mint. They were, uh, you know, I think I do know the kind that you mean. They're, in Minnesota, 
I don't know if I have any local viewers watching right now, but if any of you have ever been to the biggest candy store with the yellow fence, I think they sell those there. I mean, they sell dang near every candy you could imagine there. And they actually are pretty good. I mean, they're like 100% pure sugar, but uh, I don't have a problem with that. I love candy. Same technique, with but with petals. I don't hate it exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, it's uh, butterscotch. I love butterscotch. Okay, let's try this. One more actual rainbow one, and then we're going to move on, I think, to some other techniques. And it's a bit later than I thought it was. Oh, I need to clean this out for our last test. There you go. And I don't I don't clean out the cup usually on any like schedule or anything. I just clean it out when when it doesn't spread out cleanly like that and it's pretty obvious that it needs a little bit of cleanup. So there you can see how much nicer that one spreads out. All right, teal, indigo, purple, pink, red, orange, yellow, and sometimes too when you're like testing for a long period of time, just like it can gum up the uh, the stem when you're opening the bottle, it's like even as they're sitting here they start to kind of glue themselves in place. Uh, indigo, and then I think for this one I'm going to do two drops of purple in the center because I'm going to be pulling in and when you pull in like I mentioned you can kind of start losing some of that center color so I think this should help to keep it visible and I'm doing my normal symmetrical flower technique here there you can see as I just dip that out. Hopefully you can see a little bit of a bald spot in the middle. So you got to be, as you get closer and closer to the end of your design, you have to be kind of more and more careful not to leave a bald spot. If I should, I should have a, an asker, asterisk next to that. If you are planning to use the center of your design, if you're not going to be having the center of that flower actually on a nail then you don't need to worry about whether there's a bald spot there you kind of don't need to worry about if there's goobers or not there either but i find that um the little dips also help to kind of keep all the petals kind of more symmetrical in addition to getting rid of the goobers so let's get in one more stroke here that is looking really neat neat as in uh, neat line work very smooth draws not all polish will will draw that smoothly and there we go but this again see now I would say I prefer the other one um, this one, because this one we just did, once again, the purple is, uh, is so dark that you're not really getting purple. You're not really seeing, you know, purple, indigo, teal, green. It's just like the center is all very dark compared to this one where you can definitely see purple, indigo, teal, green as a uh, distinct rings but i do that did really i mean that's a pretty nearly flawless design i like it i like it a lot i might i might use one of those for my actual manicure but we'll see after after we do some more testing Put the cup safely out of the way so that I don't knock it over with my with my clumsiness.
Mm. Pure white sugar with stripes of flavor. You know what else I I'm uh been known to enjoy is just like rock candy, which is also just like pure sugar with some flavoring in it. Uh Yeah, exactly, Sacrista. And that's kind of what I wanted to see. And maybe I could alleviate that a little bit with slightly fewer drops. But then you're also, like I said, having trouble if you... Your nails are only so wide, so long. You can only fit so much design. So you have to draw that line between color opacity, thickness of the rings, and... So so many different things. I mean, water marbling just has so many different things to keep in mind. <clears throat> All right. So. Yeah, so Krista, that's what that other one that I showed. Um, in fact, let's bring them out here again. Whoa. Okay. Not wet enough to stick to each other, thankfully. So these two. In fact, let's even zoom in. Those are the two out of all my testing, those are the two that I'm most pleased with. Let's adjust this a little bit. So these two designs are pretty much exactly the same well, other than the amount of lines. You can see this one I did skinny, skinnier petals on one side of the cup and wider petals on the other side of the cup but uh the only other difference is the order of the colors. <clears throat> yeah, I could also maybe leave out the indigo because, like, you can kind of see... Can I get even a little closer here? Yes, I can. You can kind of see in, in this one in particular, the indigo really is the darkest of the colors. So part of it might be the purple blending with the indigo, but at the same time, I feel like they all go so well together. I would just, it would make me a little bit sad to not use all of them together, but it is definitely an option. Plus, without the indigo, since there's not actually a blue in this collection, the transition from the teal to the purple, or actually technically, I guess it's a violet, um, would be a little bit, a little bit harsher. But, I definitely think I do prefer, of course, the pink was a little bit wonky on this one, but I think we pretty much fixed that with a shake. You can see the pink on this one has uh, not got this weird separation going on. But um, I, I think I would, I don't know. Like I said, these are the two that I like so far, so far, but I have a couple other things that I want to try. So let's let's move on to that so we don't have an eight hour stream today. <laughs> These uh three hour streams, like my last well actually not my last one. Thursdays was less than two hours, but I think last Sunday I went for a little bit over three hours and when I was done I was like I was going and I was going and I was going and then when I was done all of a sudden I was like Whew. It just like the the adrenaline of streaming left me, and I was exhausted. <laughs> so, um, I do not have a stamper out here. So give me just one minute. Well, not even a minute. One benefit of not having that big of a room is that everything is fairly close. So, um, I want you to just grab this inside, which is my Moyu Crystal Clear Stamper. My generally favorite stamper for smooshies. And, uh, <clears throat> would ending in yellow make it look brighter? It, it probably would. That was kind of the idea with ending with the pink. In fact, maybe. Ooh, now I kind of want to test it with yellow in the center. It all just depends, uh, like I was talking about a little bit earlier. Decide how many drops you want. Decide how many, uh, you know, one, once you decide how many drops you want, decide what colors you want to start and or end with, and then calculate that. Because usually I try to use equal amounts of everything, 
But when you're not, then you have to figure out kind of what color you want to start with in order to end on the color that you want to end with and the amount of drops that you want to end with. I don't see anyone complaining about an eight-hour stream. Oh my god. I, I don't know how people do that long of a stream. Maybe eventually I'll work up to it. I just, of course, like I'm trying to do it without like taking a bathroom break or a food break or any of that. If I streamed for eight hours, I certainly would need a bathroom break. Um, okay. So we have my Paul sketchbook. We've still got our sketches from, well, they're not sketches. They're little swatches from last week. And I'm just gonna, actually, let's scoot these slightly out of the way here so I can scoot this up a little further. Actually, let's, all right. There. All right, we're gonna be working. Sometimes if I decide I don't wanna work in the middle of the page and it gets kinda hard to work on the bottom of the page, I'll actually flip the whole sketchbook over so that the bottom is the top. But I think for this, uh, the middle of the page should be fine. Someone, I'm sorry, I forget who, said, how about a rainbow smooshy? So we're going to try a rainbow smooshy with the uh, the finger paints colors. So, got to get these all open again because I closed them all earlier. You know, Star-Lore, I, I can absolutely believe it because I'm already amazed by how much time flies just on the streams that I've done so far. I mean, like, I don't, I feel like may, maybe I've been going for an hour and it's closer to two. So, I I can see how you could easily just, I mean, once you get going, it's, it's easy. Well, it's usually easy. There are, there are challenges. There are usually some challenges every single stream. Um, so, smooshies. There are a couple different ways to do smooshies. You can add the dots of polish directly onto your nail and then smoosh them. You can add the dots of polish maybe on a lid or something like that. Uh, pick them up with a stamper and then smoosh on your nails, which I still keep meaning to try that particular technique because I have not yet. But the way I usually do it is by adding drops on the stamper and then smooshing onto your nail, or in this case, smooshing into my notebook. Now, for using this many colors together, I'm just kind of thinking about how I want to put them, how I want to lay them out. You, I mean, smooshing is all about, I mean, it's it's the name. You smoosh them all together. So if you're having this many colors, I think it could be very, very easy to over smoosh and get a very muddy design. Um, would it be crazy to do a marble over the rainbow smooshy? Uh, awesomely crazy. If if this works out, let's uh, let's let's start out. Usually. I do nine drops of polish for a smooshy. That's just kind of what I started going with. And I lay them out in a very precise little grid. It's slightly OCD. For this one, I think I'm just going to start out with six drops. And I'm going to start with just a fat drop of each color. And kind of lay them out rainbow order. So that if they do blend, they're hopefully blending with something that they're not going to turn brown. But then we've got this gap in the middle. I wonder, too, if a little bit of white might not help this. But we'll see. So if we do just a little... See, that's not... I'm not... I'm No, no, no. I don't think that's the right way to go about this at all. Let me uh, clean off my stamper. In the olden days, I would just clean off my stamper with some acetone. But these fancy schmancy newfangled clear stampers do not play nicely with acetone, from what I understand. It will make them cloudy, and uh, that would be no good. So, I think I need them closer together so that they, they don't 
like the first smoosh, like they just went down in a, like almost like a pie chart. And the following smooshes didn't really have enough polish to, to blend and to marble. I mean, it's a smooshy marble, not just a smooshy mani, a smooshy marble. And it really looks more like a natural sort of marble than water marbling does. So let's, uh, let's, let's try mixing up the colors a little bit more and let's change how we're laying these out so that they're touching a little bit more before we so let's uh okay so they're touching well that was completely off camera i'm sorry you can see i put them so they're more touching together we'll see if this gives us more of a smoosh there but you you see how easy it is just within a couple smooshes to start getting very muddy. I mean not not necessarily brown muddy, but just where the colors are not going to be as really defined as you want them to be. Hmm. Yeah, have a rainbow on my whole hand. That's <laughs> That's so funny because that's exactly where my mind was going. I was like, I don't know if doing all six of these at the same time is going to work. But, uh, let's try. Okay. First, okay. Or, okay. <laughs> Eat each okay was a slightly different thought percolating through my head. Back to our, uh, layered water marble and playing with primary and secondary colors let's try just using the red the blue and the yellow rainbow mickey <laughs> oh my god it does it's it's not to me but when i look on camera i absolutely see it um okay so if i'm using these three let's okay of course let's also make sure you guys can see what i'm doing this time so i'm gonna lay out the yellow one two three the red well pink one two three actually i probably should have been over a little bit we'll do blue whoa one two three oh that's totally on top of it and that's okay I mean, with smooshies, it's very hard to actually, quote unquote, mess up. Whoa, knocking over polish. Um, sorry, messed up Mickey. Whoops. They're they're actually not blending as much as I thought they were. Of course, these are not jellies, so they don't have that going for them as far as blending together. And um, I'm just using a, it's like a little mini lint roller to get any excess off after I dab most of it off on a paper towel. That's how I clean my, my clear stamper. And I have just a little holder full of stuff that I, I stick the, uh, the lint roller in. So I expected a lot more blending a color with these. Um, and like you, you're getting a little bit of purple between the blue and the pink, but I don't feel like you're getting much orange between the pink and the yellow or much green between the blue and the yellow. Hmm. So, okay, let's scoot this up a little bit more so we get to our next blank spot and, um, Let's see, if I was going to wear this, of course I suppose it doesn't really matter. And I'm getting polish all over myself. And, and I'm out of polish remover. That also lets me know when I've been streaming for a long time when all my polish remover has evaporated. I just want to get this little bit of polish off the back of my hand here because it's bugging me. And off of this finger where I was helping the uh, paper to get in the water. There. Yeah, I think some white probably would help with the blending. 
But I think before I try that, I want to try this, uh... So if I did, let's see, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's... I'm gonna do, like, a... I'm gonna use a fewer amount of drops. I'm gonna do just, like, four drops of two of each color and see how these would appear if we just did so like if we do a pink and an orange you know I think these shimmery colors are maybe just not the best for smooshing mixed together but I'm gonna continue this experiment do the pink and the orange and then do the orange and the yellow I think part of the reason that I initially started going with nine drops is because if you're not using that many drops, you don't get as much opportunity for the colors to blend and marble together. Like, uh, well, I'll, sh I'll show you once I finish this. I have some, some other tests a couple pages back. This one is going to be yellow and green. That one's actually one of the nicer ones so far. Then do a green and a blue here. And actually, as I'm doing this, this kind of brings to mind, I did a vertical gradient with these with two colors on each nail. And uh, it wasn't one of my favorites, but it was kind of interesting. Vertical gradients to me are a little bit more challenging than horizontal gradients. And when I say a vertical gradient, I mean where like you got one color on this side of your nail and one color on this side of your nail, as opposed to usually you color, 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 color up this way. Um, I, I don't love the way these are smooshing together, but I do want to finish... So we have all the different ones to look at here. And uh, finish with the blue and purple. Oh, the blue and purple actually look pretty good together too. But they're not they're not as smooshy <laughs> as I want them to be. That's such a weird word to just be using as a descriptive. Um, let me go back a couple pages in the sketchbook here, which is going to be a challenge with this wet page right here. Okay. So, if I show you guys, like you see how like with this blue and green, the colors are a little bit more, uh, not exactly bleeding into each other, but, you know, they're, they're doing different things than these are doing. You know what I mean? And this is more what I prefer a smooshy to look like than this. So, I'm going to say no go on the smooshies. These are kind of tacky. Let's scooch this. I don't want to lose my peely. My peely is just hanging around up here. Let's zoom back out a little bit. <clears throat> hmm. You love the orange and yellow, Karitha? Yeah, I like, I don't, I don't dislike these. And a lot of times that's, I don't want to say it's a problem, but let's say a challenge. It's like, I don't dislike any of these. And in fact, especially as I'm sitting here and looking at them, the blue and the purple, I like quite a lot. In fact, I, that would even probably look pretty with a little bit of green just in it, just a little slightly dispersed in there. But it's not what I was going for. And that's where my frustration comes in. It's like, this is what I want. And what I tested is not turning out how I really, really want. Um, yes, the, that jellyfish is so cool. I, I love that. 
um painted dinosaur i would say just kind of like uh maybe get them ready edit them if you want to edit them or add a watermark but don't post too much on instagram all at once um un unless you want to but i think instagram's janky algorithm uh rewards more like posting on a daily basis so like if if i were to ever get off my butt and get caught up on my instagram what i probably would do is like two or possibly three posts a day because or combine them all into just one post a day and post daily rather than try and just dump them all in one day because i have them ready usually like on instagram i would post like a picture of the manicure both hands if it's something like freehand or water marble um a little short speed tutorial because you know instagram only allows like one minute videos and then in some cases a video of the peelies so i would have like three posts for each manicure and if i'm on top of it and doing it you know in real time i would maybe post the plain pictures on the same day that i upload a tutorial and then space it out like one post every day when i'm doing catch up i'm not usually that patient and i will post more than once a day but it all depends if you want to try and cater to instagram's algorithm and really try to work the system so to speak um yeah it does seem a little lighter and airier uh this last one compared to the red and orange i'm not sure what it is and it would probably look even a little bit different over black. The, uh, I'm I'm going for rainbow looks though. It's like I love this blue and purple so much. I'm tempted to like use that as a manicure right away. But we'll we'll see. I also, like I said, I'm not sure what tomorrow's tutorial on YouTube is going to be. Um. Wait, actually, do I want to put these away yet, or do I want to test these for my next? Hmm. Okay, we'll use these to test with. Let's get a. Oh, we've got a dirty lid here. Let's just clean this lid off quickly. So this is one of the lids that I was using when I was doing the, the tutorial. And once the polish dries on a lid, you should be able to just easily like peel it up like this. And your lid will be clean again. And I really like these little small lids for uh, using like little small palettes because they're just a little convenient, more convenient and easier to like move around my desk. So get those little bits and pieces off of there. Come on. Static electricity. And now we have our palette that we will be using. Um, the... Crisscross design, this one that I did last week, didn't turn out quite like that on my nail because I lost a lot of the black. And I'd like to revisit it, but I don't want to use the exact same colors. So, um, let me see here. Sorry, getting, getting, uh, slightly, I think I get slightly more distracted and slightly more behind with chat the longer I go on with stream. It's like I'm just more distractible. Um, how do you add a watermark to photos? There are a couple different ways. You can use something like Photoshop if you want to do it on your PC. Um, I, I don't, I'm not personally like super an expert, but one, uh, like cell phone app that I have used and I would say is pretty easy to learn and definitely can be used to add a watermark. And when I say a watermark, I'm just talking about like a little, you know, semi-transparent, like, of your username or something like that. Maybe if you do have a logo, you could use that. Um, the cell phone app that I use is called PixArt, and uh, that's really handy, too. I usually do most of my editing now, though, in Photoshop, just because, for me, it's easier to do it on my computer, where I have, like, a mouse instead of, like, trying to sit there on my cell phone and, you know, especially with my nails. Um... And then if you edit it on your computer, you just need some sort of facility to get it from your computer to your cell phone. I usually use Dropbox, but there are a ton, a ton of other uh, options also. No, that's fine, Painted Dinosaur. I mean, you're not... Uh, 
I, I don't mind you guys like a little bit of self-promotion, especially because, I mean, you're talking about it in chat and it's, it's nail polish related. If you like, were just like crash into chat and we're like, Hey, here's my 18 plus webcam site. Come check this out and spam. And that's a whole different thing. And, um, you know, luckily I've been able to avoid any spammers or trolls or bots or any of that stuff. Um, anybody is welcome to post a link as long as it's relevant and as long as you're not spamming, I don't mind. Um, I would like to be able to keep that open to you guys as long as possible. And, uh, I plan on leaving links active, uh, until and unless somebody ruins it. That is not ruining it. Uh, it's perfectly fine if you have a nail art Instagram to share it here. And, um, you know, I even thought about like, uh, if I create a discord that it would be really nice to have like a, a channel in discord where people could post and share their nail art channels or Instagrams, that kind of stuff. Because, you know, that's another part of the community. You guys aren't just here to see me messing around and being a dork. You're here to hang out with each other and, uh, you know, other, other forms of social media are definitely, uh, imp important. Well, I don't want to call them important because they're, they're useful and they're, uh, relevant. Let, let's say that. Um, you like Pixar 2 Purplosity? Yeah. I, uh, I think I must've just originally found it by Googling. I mean, Google, Google will find you whatever you need to know. Uh, I've had it probably since I started posting on Instagram and, uh, it's always worked well for me. So I've never really needed to look into any other options. <clears throat> um, yeah, Ninja with the, with the heart chicken. That's one of my favorite chickens. <clears throat> not ready for prime time barbie you know it's it's not for everyone and it does i mean it's it's very fun but there are definitely downsides too it can be very easy to get caught up in the numbers or like i was talking about the algorithm and you know different stuff like that and if you get too caught up with that and it takes the fun out of it like that kind of defeats the purpose um I, I was kind of nervous that that, that streaming could do that, that I would start to feel it as like an obligation. And a, a little bit it is, cause it's like, oh, it's, you know, almost two o'clock. I need to be ready to stream. I need to get my stuff in gear. But I found that it has been more of an inspiration because sometimes I would really need to do this kind of testing and I would just, you know, Mah, whatever. I'm a, I'm a go out to eat. I'm a play with the puppy, whatever. Before I know it, Saturday's over and it's Sunday. And not only do I need to get a tutorial put up, I need to do all the testing or figure something out because I procrastinated. So for me, most of the time having a responsibility just kind of keeps me from procrastinating and hopefully I can keep it at that level rather than becoming like a burdensome obligation. <clears throat> um someday you'll be brave enough well let let us know when you are and we'll all come over there and gush over your nail art and that always makes it a lot easier i know when i when i very first started my blog it was like just putting this out there in the internet and i was like well you know how how does this even work how is anybody gonna find me and when i got my very first comment it was like it was, it was a wonderful thing. And yes, there are trolls. If, if you do anything online, eventually there will be trolls. There's going to be assholes and jerks and trolls and people that you would want to punch in the face if you met them in real life. But as long as you remember that those people are in the minority and that you can't let fear of those people keep you from meeting all like you awesome people... It, it, it's all in your mindset is what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't want to like preach at you guys. <laughs> I, I think most people know these things, but, um, yeah, don't, don't worry too much about, uh, what, what is that line? People that, people that mind don't matter and people that matter won't mind. <clears throat> A cool handshake. <laughs> yeah. The, the very handshake, like don't squeeze my hand too hard and hurt my nails. 
you ever meet those people it's like they're trying to have a battle with you and they just like squeeze your hand so hard that you're like god you're gonna like break my fingers would have a very polite gentle nail artist handshake um shake and not stirred <laughs> yeah that would have been a great name for the uh the nail polish community that i made i i kind of hesitated for a while because i actually i was like I was coming up with so many good names and then I was just like, you know, all things nail nail polish encompasses all things nail polish. So that's what I uh, ended up sticking with. Yeah, that's when I'll know I've made it, Ninja. Yeah, you could talk nail polish all day, every day. I, I agree. It's, it's, uh, oh, and you guys like my advice, too. Mm -hmm. um like it's we're we're like-minded people it's just like and even within people that like nail polish there are different kinds of people that like nail artists nail nail polish um like when i put my polish in motion videos up some people are like um okay what is the point of this and other people are like oh my god my favorite thing ever i miss polish in motion please do more you either get it or you don't. You either can talk about nail polish all day or you can't. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, and somebody else said they were on Instagram too. Who else, who else said they were? I'll have to go. I'll have to go back and look. If I have time, that's, that's the one thing that I find, um, I, I try not to dwell on, but I realize that subconsciously it bothers me that because my streams are, you know, like several hours long, other than the first one, which I rewatched just to make sure that like everything went okay. And just to like have an idea of how it's coming across. I haven't had time to sit down and like rewatch all my streams. And I'm, I'm sure that I won't be able to going forward as I get more streams or as the streams get longer. And that gives me a little bit of anxiety. It's like, I, I can't even explain what it is, but like when I'm editing like my tutorials for YouTube, obviously I shoot them. Then I edit them. Then I usually, after I, you know, publish it out of the video editor, I watch it again before I upload it. And then sometimes I'll even watch it again after I upload it just to make sure that nothing is wrong. And with streaming, that's just not possible. Cause for another thing, what if something was wrong? I mean, it already happened. It's, it's over and done. <clears throat> It's hot. Yeah. Hoosiers, Indiana. Cali people. All the people. And I know, uh, I don't know if she's still here, but Jen Sweden is in fact from Sweden. And, uh, I had somebody from, was it Germany? Which just, I mean, freaking the miracles of the internet. I complain about technology and, you know, how technology doesn't work all the time. But, uh, Actually, most of the time, technology is pretty awesome and, you know, lets us meet some people that we probably would never meet in real life. So I'm just pulling out a couple brushes here because we've been chatting and getting distracted for, I don't know, oh crap, like 20 minutes now. <laughs> yeah. What were we saying about losing time easily when you're uh, doing nail art? So let's scoot these slightly out of the way here. I need to make sure I'm not going to just like put my put my elbow in nail polish. And I'm not sure which of these I'm going to necessarily use. I really like this little small brush because I feel like on my nail with striper brushes, like, okay, so obviously the notebook paper is flat and painting on a flat surface versus painting on your nails is like, way harder than you would think. I mean, obviously it's going to be a little bit different, but I find it to be way harder than it should be. I'm just checking if that was dry enough to put my lid up there. So like I said, the crisscross didn't quite turn out how I wanted. I wanted to give it a try with slightly different pattern, possibly slightly different colors. So 
I'm going to put out a little bit. I'm going to start with the pink and I'm going to try a couple different things here. So, um, I actually am looking around my desk here. You guys, I know a couple people have said, oh, let us see, let us see your room. Let us see what you're working in. It's a disaster. I will, I will just say that it is a disaster. After I did my other manicure, this is actually the notes that I had from last week's testing of all the stuff I wanted to try. I started just with a pencil sketching out some of these like slightly different uh like crisscrossed line designs. And um I do that sometimes just like on a piece of scratch paper or whatever and without going through polish or without having to deal with uh, the complications of a brush. I mean, for me, it's much easier to use a pencil than to use a brush. Um, so I tried out those different patterns and I want to give a couple a try. In fact, maybe I'll even like lightly sketch out like a couple of nail shapes here so that we could see what we're aiming for. And they're horribly wonky nail shapes, but bear with me here. Just something that's vaguely nail length and shape and width so that we don't get too uh, out of control. <laughs> I just, I, I love that you guys are like, I, I feel like we're a community now. Is that silly? I feel like I haven't done that many streams, but I mean like, I feel like a lot of you guys are showing up every week, which I appreciate more than I can even put into words. And I feel like, you know, you guys are talking to each other. You're not just talking to me. And it's it's all just so freaking awesome. That That's all I have to say about that. So, um, what was I going to say? I don't even remember. Megan, you are a neighbor's ninja. Yeah, Nail, Nail Addicts Anonymous. Purplosity, little uh, support group. Oh. Yeah, Ninja has the, uh, the inside Sally's info from time to time. So I've got my little palette here. I'm gonna get a little bit of this pink, which is already drying because I'm a, a spaz. And one of the ones I was working on was kind of from a center up to a corner. And then we'll add in some other colors. And you know, this already, those ILNPs, as gorgeous as they were, they were glittier, glit, glitterier, more glittery than I think I really wanted to admit. And that made things a lot more difficult than I think they needed to be. And then I also wanted to try, we've got a minimal one just down the center. And then a less minimal one with center and side. Should I? Let's, uh, let's get a little closer here. There, that's better. So we're going to work on these three designs. We're going to go through the rest of the colors. And, uh... The RPGC mode. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through. We're going to do orange next. I feel like I got out actually a little bit too much polish, but that's okay. Sometimes I feel bad about wasting polish, and then I'm like, you have plenty of polish. So this one we're going to... Keeping in mind, I almost feel like... Okay, actually, I can do that. So what we're going to want is we're going to want, by the time we get to purple, to be here. So red, orange yellow, green, blue, purple. So we want like five, one, two, three. Okay. Those are my little guidelines. If I was on my nail, I would probably do those again with matte top coat. I think out of, out of that whole tutorial, the matte top coat design was 
or the matte top coat guides were perhaps my best uh, takeaway from all that. So do a crossing of orange. And then I should probably do some guides on this one too. So actually that wasn't what I was going to do on this one at all, but it's okay. We can make it work. No, we're going to make another one. We're going to, we're going to do another one that was what I was actually, okay. <laughs> Once again, I'm uh, thinking as I go along here. So this one should have been like that. So we'll also want to mark out like, uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and then purple, and then like this and this. Yes, mumbles. I'll I'll explain the mumbles as I'm as I'm going. What would be a good platform for a group for Colette's groupies? You know what, you guys? Um, how how many of you are familiar with Discord? I've been considering uh, setting up a Discord, and then I was like, well, do I really have enough people to justify a Discord? But maybe I do. Then we could have a place with uh, chatting and friendships when I'm not streaming. Um, for you guys to hang out, for you guys to post other social media stuff, and it also um, has uh, private messaging functionality. It's pretty easy to use. I was unfamiliar with Discord until I started like uh, using Twitch. Okay, so Discord is basically, uh, um, God, how do I even describe it? It's like a, like a, like a message board. So like I could set up, of course I'd have to, yet another thing I'd have to come up with a name for. You can set up, um, I don't really want to call them rooms. I don't know what the technical, I think the technical term would be a server, a Discord server. Yeah, IRC. Which, what does IRC even stand for? I don't even remember if I ever used IRC. That's an excellent description, Ninja. It's like a Reddit-style platform, but a chat room. So I could set up a Discord server, and it could be, you know, my simple little Discord or something like that. And you could set up different rooms or different channels. So I could have one that was announcements where only I could post, it would be another place where I would announce when I'm live or where I could announce, uh, you know, schedules for the week, changes for schedules. And then you could set up another room, could set up a room for, say, clips, could set up a room for sharing social media stuff. And you can also, like, link your Twitch account to Discord. So you can kind of go in there, you can see who's online. Um and stuff like that and you can also private message people so that you can of course if you don't know i i keep meaning to like thoroughly explain stuff because i know a lot of my viewers are not super familiar with twitch you can direct message people on twitch it's called whispering and uh if you click on somebody's username in the chat and i i'm speaking from pc perspective because I'm not super familiar with the app, but if you click on somebody's name, you can click whisper and then like down kind of at the bottom of the screen, there's a little kind of like chat bubble thing. And if you have a whisper, it'll have like a little red number and alert. So, um, th there is that also, but, uh, yeah, discord is something that a lot of streamers use, uh, for multiple things. And, uh, I have been setting up thinking of setting up my own and it's just one of those things i haven't gotten around to yet yeah discord is the service and each channel is independently run 
See, I didn't even think of that ninja the voice in video chat because I haven't I haven't tried any of that. Like a hybrid between a form and a chat. Yes, Sacrista. That is also an excellent description. Yeah. Drag and drop photo sharing. Yeah. I would I would have to add an animals channel because I'm sure we all have adorable animals to share. Because uh being a nail art lover seems to also come with being an animal lover. I I have yet to meet a nail artist that doesn't love animals. And as as we talk, I'm still just going along here. We're uh playing around with these different different patterns and different designs. <clears throat> <clears throat> my simple little discord <laughs> that i mean honestly that's kind of what i'm leaning toward i even thought of renaming moobot my simple little block my simple little bot because you know you can uh customize the name mm. you vote for that name well i think it's uh it's starting to sound like it's nearly unanimous. Oh, dang it. Sorry, you guys. I keep forgetting how low this camera is because it's like when I'm bent like this so I can see, I can't actually see the camera. And as I reach for a bottle, I just accidentally freaking knock into it. Hopefully I'll either get used to it or my other little extension thing will come and I can give that a try. My simple little move by it. You know, it it takes some practice, Sacrista. I still am not always I'm I'm I can be very overcritical of my own freehanding. I think that's part of the problem with that design last week cuz I was just uh I was being too overly critical of myself. But part of it is just like practice. I mean, of course with everything there's practice. And I try to always make sure like you can't really quite see my all my hand in the camera, but I have it definitely resting at least on the table or like on the notebook itself so that you have a little bit of a of a brace as opposed to like if you're just like have your arm like how can I demonstrate like have your arm up and try to just like carefully draw a line as opposed to if your hand is braced and drawing a line. Kind of same thing as like when you're doing your makeup and you might like rest your hand or your finger on your cheekbone when you're trying to do like a winged liner or something like that. Um, and also just finding a comfortable way to hold the brush, especially in your offhand. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that can be like the biggest challenge. Like, well, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do this nail art with my other hand? Like, just try just practice just be patient and um break it down into simpler like if you do a more complicated design like don't worry about oh man i need to draw this on my nails just break it down into lines or circles or dots i wish this green were a little bit more intense actually but it's it's not bad i like the way these are turning out so far um and the idea behind these ones, and the idea behind the original one too, kinda, is like, uh, you ever see like a, an illustration of a prism? How the light like goes through and then like twists and refracts and comes out the other side? Jakey <clears throat> um, ass blog has some free hand nail art. I, you know, blogs and taking long breaks i think i am the queen of that um wh when you look at my blog it's like the first couple years there are hundreds of posts and then there's a couple years where there's like a handful of posts and i think for 2017 there was maybe one post and so far in 2018 there are zero posts i love my blog my blog is like I, I consider my blog my nail art roots because that's that's if I hadn't started my blog, you know, YouTube never would have happened. This would never have happened. The trajectory of my life would be on a different path. 
but somehow I never seem to find the time. But I really do feel like, you know, I was talking earlier how streaming kind of keeps me from procrastinating. I feel like it it goes throughout the week. It's not just on the days that I'm streaming that it helps me to avoid procrastination. I really feel like I'm overall somehow being more productive when I'm busier, which is something that I already knew about myself. Um, another really good example of that is the 12 days of Christmas, which I always, at some point I'm like, Oh my God, what was I thinking? But I always manage to get it done somehow. Maybe it might be an upload at 11.59 that night, but uh, I get that upload done as opposed to a regular week where I might struggle to get that one weekly upload done. So I feel like maybe the 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 renaissance of my blog, the resurgence, can can finally be close because I feel like I'm finally being as productive as I'm capable of being. Um, you know, when I quit my job, it was kind of weird because when I was at work, everything had to be on a schedule. I was in charge of paying the subcontractors. And so every week we had stuff that had to be done on a certain day. We had, you know, by this day you had to get all the invoices entered and paid. By this day you had to have all this set up on this day you had to get the checks issued on this day you had to have the checks mailed and then okay we're to the next week and you have to do it all over again on this schedule or you're gonna have people screaming at you where's my money and it was like when I'm working from home I find myself less productive and almost less accountable to myself than I was to somebody else as my boss which is like something that it seems like it shouldn't be a thing. Like you, 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 you should be at least as accountable to yourself as you are to anybody else. But I realized that it's because I didn't, I wasn't having those firm deadlines. And when I did give myself a deadline, then things would still get done. But cre it, it was hard for me to create artificial deadlines. Um, Lily, 2001. Thank you for the follow. Um, it, it was hard for me to create artificial deadlines, like just telling myself, oh, I should do this. Like that didn't work. But having like, you know, a weekly, you know, wanting to get a video up every week, that was a, a hard deadline, a real deadline. And the 12 days of Christmas were like a real deadline. Um, so those did work. And, um, it's just learning how to kind of mentally trick myself, you know, like fool myself into fake deadlines to, uh, actually get myself to be more productive. <clears throat> Winged liners for the birds. Wait a minute. I missed some comments up here. Uh, rest your hand on the table. Yeah. Um, complete lack of natural coordination. Even your stick figures are crooked. <clears throat> Family and work demands. Yeah. It, when you get one thing and you get behind, then it's super easy to fall farther behind rather than get caught up, at least in my experience, on my blog and on my Instagram, as I've mentioned. Uh, like stained glass windows. Thank you. I have stained glass is another huge, constant source of inspiration to me. I have, uh, an idea for stained glass windows using nail foils that I really want to play with. We'll have to, you know, that would actually also be really good for Pride Month. I'll, I'll have to see when I can squeeze that in. Um, freehand is so fun. And you do get better. It, it is, it's, it's intimidating. For me, it's still very intimidating. Um, it, it, it's less so than it used to be because I feel like, well, last week's was a perfect example. I, uh, I usually try not to just like trash talk my own designs and put them down in my videos, but I just kind of couldn't help myself because I was so frustrated, partly because it took me a lot longer than I thought. And I got started later than I initially planned and, you know, just get cranky in the evening and I just, I let it out and then everybody 
in the comments was like, you know, you're way too hard on yourself. That looks great. Or, you know, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it is fun and you do get better, but I can definitely understand where it's like, because you can't necessarily get the look you want. It makes you kind of hesitate to, to do it at all. <clears throat> A stream about how you do nail videos. You would love to try it, but you have no idea where to start. Um, I, w I wouldn't put it out of the question. Um, I mean, I'm, I feel like sometimes, like, I'm not, how do I want to say it? Like, up to par, like, with my editing skills compared to some other channels, even though I, I really try not to compare myself to others because you're not like anybody else and even your vision of what you want your video to be is not going to be like anybody else's what i when i very first started out i thought about you know when i watch a video what do i like to see that's oh shoot okay hold on i don't know if these spill or not okay Okay, the polishes are safe. I knocked over the, the bucket with the rest of the polishes, but it's okay. Um, when I very first started, I really had never edited before. Um, <clears throat> so it was all a learning curve, but I just tried to make something that was what I would want to watch. And I, I still try to, you know, balance making what I want balanced with what people want to see because you're never going to make everybody happy all at once. But um, I'm not sure if you've been here before when I've talked about, you don't, you absolutely do not need fancy equipment to get started. This is my tutorial camera. It's a, it's just a Canon point and shoot. You don't have to have a big fancy video camera or a, a DSLR you can make it work with, with a regular camera. You can make it work with a cell phone camera, if that's what you have. Um, and then I just will record, not necessarily the whole thing, but the important parts, and then edit them together, which, I mean, editing is a whole other thing, and I hate it. But um, we'll see. You know, once once I get the Discord set up, Megabuds you can feel free to ask questions of me or if there's anyone else who knows about editing. Um, but I'll, I'll consider doing a stream too. It's kind of hard to show on stream cause I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not as hard as I'm thinking, but um, I, I won't rule it out. But the, the place to start is wherever you're comfortable starting. Uh, my, my advice to people wanting to get into YouTube is always just do it. I mean, even if you just, you know, do the most basic thing, you know, it's, it's a starting point. And it was kind of the same thing with streaming. Like I wanted everything to be perfect for my first stream. And when I realized that that wasn't really possible and wasn't likely to happen, it was so freeing. And that's what actually got me to get started, not waiting for it to be perfect, but just getting started with it. Um, <clears throat> but I would say editing is probably the biggest learning curve and possibly learning to listen to your own voice. <laughs> I still don't like listening to my own voice. Um, trying to get into more creative vein in your life again. You used to draw. Trying to get back to your life. Yes, nail art is like 10 little sketchbooks. I mean, some people are like, it's, it's nails. It's not art. Of course it's art. I mean, some art is weird. And I'll admit when I go to an art museum, sometimes I do look at something and go, I don't know if that's art. But on the other hand, of course it's art. If if somebody looks at it and thinks it's art, then it's art. <clears throat> 20 little canvases. Toenail art. I very rarely do toenail art. <laughs> um Okay, so you guys let's uh well, it's backwards for you. So let's count this. One, two, three, four. Which is you guys' favorite? Let's get in a little closer. Um, well, I'm still catching up with comments, too. <clears throat> hmm. I always find the imperfections in your nail art. Well, everyone else loves it. Yeah. Well, and sometimes literally just taking and instead of just like 
you know, you're looking at it and you're, you know, as close as you possibly could be as you've been squinting over it, just take and hold your hand out literally at arm's length and, you know, look at it like you haven't been staring at it for a couple hours. And it, it takes a little bit of mental training, but just know, I mean, most people, even if they take your hand and look at it, they're not looking at it as closely as you're looking at it when you're, when you're doing the nail art. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Sacrista. You know, that's, that's kind of, I, you know, a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of nail artists, like I said, Instagram only allows short videos. And I feel like a lot of nail artists are catering to that quick one minute Instagram, you know, style of video, or especially where it's like, you know, only one nail is being featured in the whole tutorial. Um, which, which is fine, but that's never, that's never been my style. You know, I'm going to show you the whole thing. And I've always felt kind of like if I were to put a name to my style, like, you know, there's a lot of fans of Simply Nailogical and I would say her style is perhaps more entertainment. My style is more conversational. I'm not just doing it. I mean, I hope you guys are entertained, but I also hope that people who actually want to learn can learn and that I'm, you know, explaining stuff clearly. I I don't know if I'm an expert for Velocity on editing, but I do have at this point quite a bit of experience. I mean, yeah, I guess I've I've had my YouTube channel for almost nine years now, so but I really I I have resisted learning very much. Uh <laughs> You know, we we were talking a couple couple streams about Windows Movie Maker and whether or not it's available in Windows 10. And I think it was uh, Waking Ribbon said she found it in the Windows 10 store. And I went in there and looked and they have a couple of things that are called Movie Maker, but they're not actually Windows Movie Maker. And uh, my my resistance to or my ins my insistence on continuing to use that and my resistance to learning anything new is part of the reason keeping me from upgrading to Windows 10, um, which would make the uh, the whole capture card thing and the whole video game streaming thing much simpler because it seems like everything now wants Windows 10. And I'm still on Windows 8, which I'm not a fan of, but I'm at least familiar with. <clears throat> yeah, a, a lot of too, I mean... And it's inter interesting, Ninja, like with YouTube in particular, you can almost see some of the YouTube changes in algorithms when you look at older videos. Like back in the day when it was not easy to get custom thumbnails, a lot of videos, the last third of the video would just be a still image to guarantee that that image would show up for the thumbnail. And that was something that I never like fell into that trap. I mean, partially because thankfully I was able to get access to custom thumbnails, you know, fairly early in my YouTube career. But uh, like you said, with the get front loaded with prologues and likes and follows and that stuff, I, I have added a little bit of prologue, but I usually try to keep mine fairly short and not like draw it out or have like a huge long intro i mean some intros are cool and they definitely do help with branding but branding has never been top of mind for me or i wouldn't have picked such a long complicated username honestly in the first place like my simple little pleasures is it, it communicates what i wanted to but it for one thing is too long to use on all social media that's why colette mslp evolved on certain platforms and on another hand, it doesn't quite scream nail art, which was part of the point. But on the other hand, it is majority nail art. So maybe I should have focused on that too. But I mean, at this point, it's it's way too late for me to rebrand. I'm my simple little pleasures and I'm okay with that. Um, when YouTube videos get straight to business. Well, you, you must really love my old videos that you'd be digging through then, Ninja, because... 
I used to not have barely any intro and I wouldn't even show base code or base color or any of that. You'd turn on the video and we were right at the cup for marbling. <clears throat> More mods for the toenail art streams. There will be no toenail art streams. Four, 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 four. So this, this is four. See, now that's interesting because that was the first, the first alternative to the original crisscross that I did. Got lots of, lots of other numbers too, though. I mean, it doesn't seem like you guys don't like any of these, but I, I'm kind of leaning toward this one or this fourth, fourth one also. <clears throat> On the right of the screen. Yeah, this one. With the diamond in the middle. And I like that because it's like we scooch back up here to this one. The way that I wanted to do it was so that the red and the purple met in a diamond. And on most nails, it just didn't quite end up like that. The edges started overlapping and weird stuff started happening because I was drawing the X's in this direction. So to get them to properly line up along the sides here, whereas with this one now, you know, I started out, it, it's a similar shape, but instead of drawing them this way, I'm drawing them that way, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, <clears throat> you've learned more from me than anyone else. Oh, thank you, Megabuts. How to take off glitter when you first posted the foil method. Yeah, that, you know, that is still one of my more higher viewed videos. I mean, sometimes it's it's very interesting and weird to me which videos get a lot of views or which videos continue to get views, you know, after they're old. Most of my videos, I mean, you know, they'll get a couple thousand views in the first days and then, the, excuse me, they'll kind of fall off and, you know, end up not getting as many. Whereas some, it's like, crap, this video is five years old. And I look at it and I cringe, but people still enjoy <clears throat> watching it. Still too scared to try water marble. Don't be scared. Excuse me. <clears throat> if nothing else, you could play around with it and start doing maybe some little testing, kind of like I do. But what I always try to keep in mind, if all else fails, if worse comes to worse and you hate it, you get it on your nails and it's a disaster and you hate it, it's nail polish. You get polish remover and you take it off and you start over and maybe you try again or maybe you give up for now not permanently you don't ever permanently give up but you know just go with a plain manicure or something like that because you know one of the things i think people are confused it's like oh simple little pleasures well this water marbling stuff doesn't look simple that's that's not it the simple part is just having a manicure what kind of manicure yeah that can go from simple to super complicated <clears throat> <laughs> yeah practice on cheap polish so you don't waste your good stuff my if i were to recommend a brand i mean there's no brand that always works for water marbling but if i were to recommend a brand to start off with it would be the sally hansen extreme wear line and in particular the creams i've had a lot a lot of success with those and they're fairly reasonably priced they're not like you know opi prices especially if you can can catch a sale or get a coupon or something like that <clears throat> daggett hello thank you for stopping by and joining us yeah or you even could uh you know like i've had people tell me that they've Water marbling is for more than your nails, if you want it to be. Um, I had somebody, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember, I don't remember how they contacted me, but they made these little water marbled, like, uh, pins, like green and white and gold or something, little, uh, like shamrock pins. And there's a channel I follow on YouTube. They don't use nail polish. Oh, crap. Um but they water marble guitars. So they'll have like a big vat and I don't know what kind of paint it is they're using, but they'll, you know, add all this paint in there, swirl it, and then they'll dip in the whole like guitar body or whatever you call it and pull it out. Uh, I've seen people water marble bikes. 
I've seen people water marble, you know, all all kinds of things. So if if you don't want to do it on your nails, just find something else that looks plain and you think could use a little interest on it. Or you could uh cheat it with some fancy drag marbling. I haven't uh done any drag marble that really looks like a cheated water marble in a while, but it definitely is is possible. So, okay, so we really like these and we really like this one in particular, which was kind of the one that I was leaning toward. And if you want to like compare to how it compare compare to how it compares, yeah, that's good English. It's like this one of my of my pencil tests, which I mean, with all the lines and all the crisscrossing, we're getting kind of complicated, which is why there's a couple like darker lines. But so to have that translate, let's scoot this over, have that translate into this. I mean, that's that's my creative process. And I'm, I'm so glad that you guys are, are interested to see the creative process behind it, because Sometimes I impress my own self, but impressing your own self is not very impressive. <clears throat> Suggest for your first time OPI China Glaze or Essie. Um, hmm. I would say probably OPI or China Glaze if those are the ones that you have available. I haven't marbled very much with Essie. Um, OPI and China Glaze usually work pretty well. And 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 for finishes like I said, creams the shimmerier or glitterier they are, the more problems you could possibly run into. It's not that they absolutely won't marble, but that you could run into more trouble. And also, um, sticking with the same finish for all the colors that you're using and probably like less colors, like this, these rainbow water marbles where I'm using like eight different colors. I mean, with the color paints, it's fairly easy because I know they all work together. But generally speaking, getting the more the more colors you want to use, the harder it is to find colors that will work well together. Or Color Club. Color Club is also very good for marbling. Um, if you were looking when I was showing some of those uh other marbles on my on my channel, the Color Club Pastel Neons marble really well, the Color Club Halo Hues marble really well. Um, I've got lots. And if you, uh, if you go like on my channel, if you, if you have a particular brand that you want, if you put in that brand in water marble, you should get a couple water marbles at least that pop up and you can see if you have any of the similar colors or the same colors as, as like a starting point. <clears throat> de-stashed. Oh my God. That's a dirty word. No, not really, but like when I hear about people de-stashing, I'm just like, oh, like I, I could not part with any of my collection. Like my mom sometimes like she'll have friends at work that like know that I do nail art and stuff and they'll bring her polishes to give to me. She's like, do you really want these? You didn't use any of those last ones I bought you. And I'm like, mom, do you even need to ask me that? Of course I want them. I want all the polish. Yeah. Yeah. Zoya can work well. Although I have had Zoya piss me off a couple times, but I've had almost every brand piss me off a couple times. Like getting overly confident and thinking, oh, this is for sure going to work. And then it doesn't. And then I'm like left, you know, struggling to find an alternative. In fact, oh, oh, that reminds me when I was when I was getting ready for today's stream and I was pulling out all these rainbow colors and the color paints are one of my go-tos, of course, and these finger paints colors are another go-to, but another one that I could have pulled out wouldn't have been as sparkly and beautiful as these finger paints one are uh, the China Glaze. Is it tropical something? It's the colors. I, I bought the collection specifically to water marble with and then I got them and they didn't water marble. And uh, that was another one that I ended up doing a gradient with a water marble over the top of it um, because I had planned to use the colors and it was another Sunday ready to do a tutorial. Oh, I've got these, these colors. They should marble perfectly. They're China glaze. They're creams. They're all from the same collection. All things that in my past experience, 
are positives with water marbling. And I started dripping them in the cup and it was a disaster. Um, let's see here. Mm, gave away all your Sally Hansen and simple colors. Well, I hope they found a good home. That's the one thing with this dashing is that, you know, as long as you're not throwing the polish away, if that polish is going to another good home, you probably made somebody's day with that. Emily DeMolly. Look at Ninja with the, uh, with the obscure indie brands. <laughs> uh, new racks to support your nail polish habit. Yeah, I, you know, I love the look of nail polish racks, but I think I've mentioned before, like, even if the walls of my room weren't already covered, like, I mean, obviously, like, over here we have closet, so there's no wall. Over here we have bookcase, so there's no wall. Next to that bookcase is another bookcase, and then like a tall stack of uh like drawer units basically i have very little wall space in my room but even if all the walls were available i think my my stash has outgrown being in a wall display mm. polish and bees knees i've seen both of those i don't have any from either of those okay so we like this i'm leaning toward that being tomorrow's tomorrow's tutorial because it's i mean it turned out basically just how i wanted and when i do it on my nails like i mentioned i probably would use that same um kind of matte dotting technique to somewhat mark out where i want things to go so like for this one i had these pencil marks along the side might also I'd, I'd have to think about it i don't know if i would need to do more testing or think about it like marking where each of the edges are so like on this one the pink and the purple are very slightly in fact it doesn't even really show up that much on camera uh but they're very slightly um whoops where are we here very slightly uneven so i would want to add a dot on each side to keep them even and then it might also work to add dots where each of the other colors cross. Or just use, like I was doing, the guides along the side. They're also a little bit, like, here and here. Like, I would want them to be a little bit more symmetrical. But that also would just be partly uh, paying more attention to what I'm doing than, obviously, when I'm testing and chatting with you guys. It's a, a slight bit of distraction. Um, a room tour or a nail collection tour. Well, the na the nail collection tour may in fact happen. I mean, really, um, like, you know, Beanie's area is here. Like, right in front of Beanie's area is where my main Helmers are going to go. I also have two Helmers that are next to the bookcase with the other bookcase on top of them. But, uh... I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly ashamed of my room, but neither am I proud of it. I mean, I've, I've told you guys it's a disaster area. I mean, it literally, like this, this area that you're seeing, this is the only neat area and this isn't even really that neat. I'm surrounded by, I, I don't want to call it a horde, but I do have a little bit of hoarding tendencies. And if we have any other hoarders fans in the house, oh my God, that show. It's It's been helpful to me. That's how I know I have hoarding tendencies. And when I'm watching that show and I'm like, oh, man, I've, I've thought that or I've had that problem before. But, I mean, in some cases, it's like, I mean, the garbage hoarders, I, I can't get down with that. Like, how do you not empty your garbage can? How do you just drop trash on the floor and be okay with that? Um, <clears throat> unicorn. I just can imagine that unicorn is an awesome flavor. The love of polish subscription box if that was for me uh that question was for me i do not i don't get any subscription box mm. do i use snaps i do not i have an excel spreadsheet for my nail polish collection i was uh talking about that a little bit in the last stream um i i've heard of snaps but part of the thing that turns me off is like taking pictures of each bottle of polish and i've got three thousand bottles and pictures can be so inaccurate at times also and also just like wanting 
wanting a column for all the different little weird things that I want to track. Like, um, so like on OPI bottles, you've got the name and you've got that little number on there. Well, I, I suck at putting things in frame, you guys. I'm sorry. That little number is on my spreadsheet. That's, uh, the kind of little bit of slightly OCD tendencies that, uh, exist in my, my nail polish tracking system. <clears throat> Let me get another drink of water here. You can see my water is almost gone. Mm. And it's after five, so I really should wrap up here. Um, hoarders unite. <laughs> you don't hoard NES games, you're a collector. Yeah, I mean, when you're a collector, you can... I mean, that's the excuse, right? It's not a hoard, it's a collection. <clears throat> but I think I think games, NES games, or any kind of games really, and like nail polish are such awesome things to collect because really they don't take up that much space as opposed to like people that want to collect, I don't know, cars. Number one, hello, cars are expensive. I mean, if you're Jay Leno and can afford to build yourself a freaking parking ramp to hold your car collection... <clears throat> that's one thing but for normal people i think uh more reasonable collections are, are a better idea <clears throat> okay so this box that you guys heard fall over earlier was um holding a few other things wait did something fall out of here let's see here We've got the six island peas, we've got northern lights, we've got, okay, I'm gonna, let's pull back the camera a little bit here. And I don't think I'm gonna play with these, but just, I, well, no, maybe I will play with them just a little bit after I show you guys, but then we're gonna wrap up. So these are all colors by LaRoe, and I pulled them out with the intention of doing something rainbowy with them. But then these finger paints are uh, going so well that now I'm like, well, maybe I just want to do the finger paints ones. Let's uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, -uh. blue. We've got like an indigo and a purple. What do you guys think of those colors? I mean, it's more than a rainbow, but, uh, like, there's two greens and a teal and an indigo and a purple, but, like, I really like all those together, but there's so many of them, like, nine colors. I mean, you saw with the OPI color paints how difficult it was dealing with, like, eight colors, and they're different consistencies of hollow like there's linear hollows there's like kind of chunkier hollows there's scattered hollows and they don't all necessarily play well together so i don't know that i would want to water marble with these i was thinking of like picking six of them to do this with but the finger paints work so well for this although you know no if i did okay another question and i know i i Ninja, was it you that I was talking about the polling functionalities with? I was supposed to learn how to do polls. Do you guys like these with the white background? Or do you think I should give these a test with a black background? That was the only other thing I was thinking. Because I was thinking white would be good because it would be different than last week's, than this one. But on the other hand, these would pop so nice against black. But on the other hand, the white is also nice. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably have to, have to think about that for a little bit after I, after I look at the rainbow bottles. Yeah. They're, and they're, and they're not a saturated color wise, especially, um, certain of them, like this orange one, it's not a very strong hollow. This gold one is not as close to yellow as I would necessarily prefer, but this is also, I know, a different pro, a different, uh, formula from their regular polish because this is one of the stamping polishes 
Uh, this blue one, I think you can even tell just looking at it from a distance, has a slightly chunkier sort of glitter to it. I don't know. Maybe I'll put... I'm, I'm going to keep these out, but I don't think I'm going to play with them right now. Because I, I feel myself kind of hitting that mental wall like I did last week where I start to just uh, <laughs> lose my train of thought and uh, start fumbling my words a little bit more. So I think my only decision will be whether to keep these on a white background or put them on a black background. And we're going to be doing this as a tutorial on our nails tomorrow. Oh, Vinny, you're back. Hello, little boy. Let me not take up your whole chair here. So, what we're gonna do, let's move that over there. I'm gonna stick these back in the shoe box. And, uh, would a polish with flakies even water marble? Probably not well. The other thing with, uh, polishes that have like a little bit of little bit of glitter or a little bit of flake to them in addition to not spreading out well you know how i was talking about like uh like on this one how nice and smooth the lines were when you get something that's too like glittery even if you're drawing a smooth line like it goes in the water kind of a little bit spastic and wiggly um black i don't think i could really pick without seeing it black. oh now we gotta well okay let's okay we're gonna do two more things here we're going to where oh here you go we're gonna get in here we're gonna do a black like this and try to keep it like nail sized like I mentioned before, my tests last week, I try not to make them too big, but even like that, I mean, realistically, that's bigger than my nail. We'll give that just a minute to dry here. Um, and then we're going to peel off the rest of this manicure. We've already got one nail that, uh, if you were not here early in the stream, came off while I was opening a bottle of polish. Literally. Um, that's how much of an asshole the peel off base coat can be sometimes. And, uh... As much as I like it, that's, like, the main thing I don't like about it. And possibly, you know, the other thing with this really glittery manicure, and this is not, this is not a great angle, I apologize, but, uh, it's actually, it's, it's hard to tell on camera. You can kind of see on my thumb there, I'm getting a lot of tip wear, which for me is quite common with glitters. And it's like, tip wear is when you got your nails polished and the, the, the tips don't exactly chip. They just start wearing away. And for only two days of wear, it's really not great. But um, since I wrap the tips and I wrap the sides in an effort to prevent the, the peel-off base coat lifting, if you start getting tip wear, I mean, if, if the polish is wearing away, obviously the top coat is also worn away. And so that introduces an area where uh water and stuff can get in and makes your nails more ha getting tip wear makes your peel off base coat more likely to fail there i managed to say that clearly okay um um um, um. yeah it it exactly said Krista. it's like it interferes with the surface tension of the water like the water yeah it it it's just one more example of how goofy and picky water marbling can be peel off base coat what an asshole well it is especially like i mean it, it could be the worst possible time usually i have pretty good luck or i at least have the sense to to take something with me to make sure that i don't have any accidents like i always have nail glue in my purse in case i break a nail if i'm going somewhere like special and i'm worried about my peel off base coat to uh, failing me at a at a moment when I need it most I'll include I'll stick some in my purse or stick a regular base coat in my purse in case I lose a nail of course that's assuming you can find it I've also lost nails you know at Target at Cub at the library and who knows what those people thought when they uh, came across my my little peely 
So let's, uh, we're going to want these like about here. And our corners are going to be here. And then in between, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So those are our guides. I suppose I could actually. We've got the mat out here. Let's uh dab out a tiny bit of mat and get um dotting tool. And we're just going to with the mat mark on the side on the center. And then we're going to want one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Um, dry matte polish. Hurry up. Mm. Oh, you're going to try marbling tonight. Good, Mega Butts. And if it doesn't work out, just remember, it's only nail polish. It's... It's not the end of the world. It can be frustrating as all get out. Absolutely it can. But uh in in the end it's no no harm no foul. I mean, you know, nobody's going to be hurt. The world is not going to end if your marble does not turn out. You'll just be a little sad and you'll have to wear something else. Um yeah, hi there. How you doing? Glad you joined us. Good view of Beanie washing himself up there. Whoops. Yeah, hi. I said your name. <laughs> He's such a goofball. All right. Those are... Well, they weren't fully dry, but I think I just fingered off the... Okay, that sounds bad. I dabbed off the part that was still wet. So many unintentional... Uh, words that could be taken as dirty dang it i got polish all over the side of this bottle um of course sometimes maybe it is intentional i know sometimes like uh with darby and he'll say something and he'll say it with such a deadpan face and it's like you knew what you were saying darby and I, I i really do appreciate his dry sense of humor um <clears throat> Okay. So wet and floppy. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to try this. We're going to go from here up to this corner. And sometimes the challenge for me is not just drawing a straight line, but drawing that same straight line if I need to add a little bit more polish, which, you know, over black with colors that are a little bit shimmery or a little bit sheer... Whoa, that was not completely straight. Can be a challenge. But try to try to just stay slow and steady and thin. You know, this actually I already did that one, but this is a good opportunity to try this with uh my thinner liner brush and see how this reacts. Cuz I was thinking of uh yeah, good thing, SSD. <laughs> yeah, did you guys try the quote command today? There is one quote in there. So we're going to try this one. And I would like to... You know, I got these striper brushes at Sally's. Actually, we're not in frame here, are we? And this one I've actually chopped on a bit to make it even thinner. I would like to maybe pick up some some other stripers at like Michael's or something. Is this oh my god, that's way too that's way too thin. That's not going to work. Okay. Well, we tried. We tried you guys. Back to my little traditional or not traditional. What word am I trying to say? Trusty. My little trusty janky paintbrush. And uh you know, you don't always have to have uh, 
nail art tools to do nail art. There are a lot of tools that you can DIY yourself at home. There are a lot of tools that you can find in, in non-nail art places like Michael's. And sometimes it's going to work better than other. Like, uh, you know, you can get craft glitter and you can use craft glitter on your nails. But it's really chunky and really a finer nail art glitter. You are going to get a better result. See, I think the, this orange and this yellow are going to be the, the challenging ones over black because it's hard to get them opaque and maintain a thin line. Yeah, I, I'm I'm 90% sure we're going to go white on this one, but I'll, I'll finish the colors. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot of nail art tools from Michaels or different things like... Uh, stickers you can you can use stickers on your nails um but again there's <clears throat> a difference i mean they sell like nail art stickers and the main difference is they're so nice and very thin you can really get a good application on your nails like stickers that are intended to go on paper if they're thick they will apply more difficultly on your nails more difficultly i think that's probably not proper um not just because they're thick and they stick up, but because they're thick and they don't want to, uh, they don't want to conform to the curve of your nail. So you might apply it on there and then it just pops back flat and oh, dang it. Okay. I, I hope that hot shoe adapter comes before my next stream because it would, it would have it at about the same height. But it would set it back a little farther. I would get a little bit of a different angle, but it would still be close. I really hope that shows up soon. Um. So yeah, you can you can for sure use stuff that's not sold as nail art stuff on your nails, but you may there may be a little bit of a of a challenge or a little bit of a learning curve. So. I'm I'm thinking I'm still leaning toward white. Are you guys also still leaning toward white? I mean, some of these are showing up pretty good. The pink is showing up. The blue is showing up. The orange, green, and yellow, not so much. Even the purple, not so much. Which is kind of frustrating, because I have... I have used these before over black. Um, in fact, let's... Let me show you guys. Uh, um, so, um, let's unhide this. Yeah, so here are these finger paints over white, and here, similar, nearly the same design over black. It is definitely possible to get them opaque over black, but it's a little bit more of a challenge. And as far as for this design, um, I, I think that the white is, is bringing through more of the genuine rainbow and more of a juicy color that I really like. Um, green gunpowder tea is green gunpowder tea. What the heck? I've heard of green tea and I've heard of gunpowder. I did not know that the two combined into a tea ninja. <laughs> it's way too thin. That's not going to work. Um, yeah. Oh, we've got to get going painted dinosaur. Well, thank you for joining us. The stream is almost over, so you're not missing much. The only thing that we have left to do is we are going to get rid of this manicure. We are going to we are going to have some peel porn, ladies and gentlemen. If anybody wants to uh I I thought about trying to do like a little uh stereotypical porn music but uh boom chick boom like that. Well, I I guess I just did. I did more than think about it. And that's what happens when we're getting to the end of the stream and Colette is getting a little bit loopy and more than a little bit hungry to be honest although i find that after i stream i can't 
just immediately go eat even if i'm really hungry i need to like calm down just a little bit you guys excite me so much there we, there's another semi-dirty quote for you guys <laughs> okay let's uh find a clean orange stick here and i think i'll actually grab a paper towel to collect peelies on i've got my little bottle of mango cuticle oil and i'm going to use a little bit of this even though we've had demonstration that these are probably going to pop right off just got a little bit on my finger i'm just going to apply it along my cuticles and that helps to kind of get under the edge and encourage the peel off to release it's kind of like what i was saying also about greasy food i mean cuticle oil greasy food same difference i mean it's it's going to accomplish the same thing um chunky rainbow over the black i i loved both of those chunky rainbows and uh the white one was uh it, it's absolutely not my not my idea i lost my top here i don't know i don't know where the top to my oil went but i'll find that after stream um, absolutely not my idea. It was, I have, uh, on Pinterest, I have an, I want to try that board. That's full of manicures that I would like to try my hand at recreating. And the, the white chunky waterfall was one of those. And after I did it, I thought, man, I, I got to try this over black, excuse me. And to keep it from being exactly the same, instead of doing the waterfall at the cuticle, I flipped it around and, uh, did it from the tip. So, let me get one more drink here. Well, I don't know if this will be my last drink, actually, but at least one more drink. Stay hydrated, bot would be proud. I've almost emptied my 18-ounce bottle. And so for Peely's, this is, uh, where do we go here? Fun Lacquer, Northern Lights. But you can see the bottle color in my face cam compared to the color on my nails. Or if I bring it over here, like on cat cam, that's actually a lot more accurate than what's showing up here. For whatever reason, I'm probably going to blame the ring light because why not? Um, this was a gorgeous color. I enjoyed wearing it. Um, I, I recorded a polish in motion for this actually, but I haven't looked at it. If it turned out well, there may be a polish in motion for this going up um, maybe later tonight. It's already almost 5.30, so if I don't get it tonight, then, well, Sunday would be the tutorial, and Monday the stream would go up. So if the polish in motion for this doesn't go up tonight, if it's good enough to post, it will go up Tuesday. I know that's kind of a lot of days to go over there, but we're going to... I didn't name this peel porn, by the way. Uh, you can credit Christine for that, but uh, if you get a nice peel, it is very satisfying. You just want to kind of get it started at the edge, and then go along, and hopefully we we'll get a good peel here. Yeah, Thursday's peel was so unsatisfying, but this one is pretty good, and I'm actually. I'm pleasantly surprised that the rest of these are not, like, flying off at the drop of a hat. Sometimes it can be hard to get them started at the edge, which to me is good because it means that you could have worn it longer. I mean, I try to kind of keep from going all the way to the edge with the peel-off base coat and then really seal the edges, kind of like I seal the tips and the sides with top coat so that you don't have you know, that space for water or oil or whatever to get in. Um, but if you do it too well, then it's hard to get a starting point to uh, get your peel going. But usually, all you need is just a little in, and you can get under there with the orange stick and pop the whole thing off. And I do recommend an orange stick so that you don't uh, get, like, too aggressive with your nails. Like if you were using a uh, a metal nail implement like uh, like this, it could be really easy to, especially on stubborn peels, get a little too aggressive and actually damage your nail. Whereas the orange stick, you're really not likely to do that because, I mean, it's just a piece of 
fairly soft wood. Mm. Bow chicka wow wow. Yeah, I don't know. How did that even become like the stereotypical porn music? Did porn actually used to have that kind of horrible music in it in like the 70s? I, I don't know who I'm asking. I mean, that's like assuming there's somebody here that was watching porn in the 70s. <laughs> uh, but we're just going to take this off. I have I have a lot of peels. For a while, I don't know, people like seeing the peels. For a while, I was showing the peel of the previous manicure at the beginning of a new tutorial. Um, sometimes if I was, like, ahead of the game, which I rarely am, I would include the peel of the manicure at the end of its tutorial and say, like, how well it wore and stuff. And then I think, like, since the beginning of the year, I don't think I've included any peels in any of my videos. But I've still been recording them, so I've been considering, like, doing a you know, a whole bunch of Peely's video and showing all them. But you can see, like, my nails are fairly clean. You're still going to need to do a little bit of cleanup, especially, like, if you have some stuff that's under the edges. So, at least for me, it does not eliminate using polish remover, but you have to use a lot less. And as far as, like, I mean, this is a glitter... This is a, a super true glitter. You guys know when you saw me apply it. It's, as, as the website description says, 100% color shifting glitter in a clear jelly base. And if I did not have peel off base coat, we'd be sitting here hanging out for five or 10 minutes with the foil method, waiting for acetone to eat through all the sticky, glittery, chunky, stubborn layers. So, I mean, glitter polish is really what peel off base coat was created for and a lot of us nail artists are kind of just using it on the regular but um it's worth it ha you know that one nail that popped off is worth not having to soak off the whole thing um we're all angels here <laughs> yeah of course we are um so yeah that's that's all i have for you guys today and it, it's kind of more than i thought because when i woke up this morning other than wanting to do something rainbow, I was really kind of unsure of, of what I was going to be doing. So I'm really pleased. You know, I really like that water marble too, but I'm going to go with, I'll have to come up with a name for it. Sometimes I swear, I mean, I have almost 700 videos at this point. So coming up with a name that's catchy, unique, and descriptive sometimes can be a little bit of a challenge discord um well i don't have one yet um next i'll i will try to get it set up by next stream and basically w once i have my my server set up i'll be able to have like a link that i can give you guys and when you click on it you'll be able to join my server and i mean the sign up process it's it's no more difficult than any other you know, online account where you, you know, sign up. Um, so yeah, next, I don't know where my, my handy dandy notebook is, but the goal will be to have, uh, my simple little discord set up by next stream. I'm glad you guys think that's a good idea. And, uh, yes. Thank you for being helpful, Mod Ninja. For once. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All all those things. The the chicken feels. I love you, Ninja. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Where are we gonna go today? Um lots of people on, lots of games on. Lots of uh Oh hey, how about let me uh I think we will be going creative today, and let's, uh, we've been here before, some of you, some of you who were here prior, um, we're gonna go raid Art of Praise Moyer, 
And once again, I do not have a good raid message. I apologize. But just say hello. Um, you know, that, I mean, that to me, it's just like, you know, send everybody over to hopefully continue and have a good time. And thank you all for watching and hanging out with me. I hope I'll see you next time. Maybe another midweek surprise stream. And if not, have a wonderful rest of your day. Ah.